Hello. I was going to come back and stream yesterday on Twitch, but I was stuck in really bad traffic. So I disappeared yesterday to go to the dentist because I broke my retainer, which sucks. But yeah, traffic was horrible. It took about an hour and a half to get home. <laughs> I was going to come back and stream the rest of my Overwatch stuff. So for those of you guys who are like, what happened to you? I thought you were going to stream. Well, traffic happened. It was really bad. I don't know, man. An hour and a half to get back. And I was going to stall and just like chill over there, you know, just like wait until traffic dies down. But that would mean I would have to be there for three hours, just like trying to burn time, and kill time. So not very fun. I need to find a, uh, a new dentist's office. But at least, at least uh, my, I had to get a new night guard or whatever it's called. At least I was covered partially by insurance. So instead of having to pay like what, 500 bucks for a night guard, I only had to pay like, I think like a hundred something. Which is still pricey, but Beats paying 500 Because I really thought I was going to pay 500 for this crap. And I was like, <laughs> please, no. All right, let me make sure my Discord went out. Discord looks good. And then we're on the right platform. Hello, Hannah Cooper. Or Hannah Copper. How are you doing today? Hi, long time no see. Hope you are doing good. Hello, hello. I'm doing well. Thank you. I, uh, I had to... <laughs> I snapped at my... Um, one of my Invisalign trays yesterday and I had to go get a new one. So it was horrible. It sucked. And then traffic was just really bad. But at least, at least, you know, nowadays when you're sitting in traffic, you could just play a good show or like a, you know, podcast or a YouTube video in the background and listen to it. And yeah, I don't know. It was crazy. I don't know how people commute in fucking horrible, horrible traffic in LA. I don't know how they do it. It's just, it's just a nightmare. Honestly, like I would always just recommend try try to work as close as you can to where you live or like vice versa because sitting in traffic for hours is just a nightmare. I don't know, man. I feel like for like my mental, I would just be like I would just be like mind effed. <laughs> just having to sit in traffic and just be all grumpy and stuff. But I mean, like I said, at least nowadays you can multitask and listen to podcasts or like audio books or stuff like that. But how are you guys doing today? Hello. How's it going? Hope you guys are doing well. We got some small mini updates going on with the Idaho, um, the Idaho student murders. And yeah, I just wanted to pop in with you guys and just watch it with you. And then we could do a little bit of some true crime stuff. And then honestly, I don't think today's stream will be very long. Um, cause like the Brian Cober stuff, the Brian Koberger, uh, stuff is like really short. I just wanted to watch some like body cam footage as well that popped on my feed. I haven't seen it yet. So I wanted to watch it with y'all and then, yeah, we'll hop into some true. You guys hear that? I don't know. Sometimes when I start streaming, my dogs get really excited. Oh, here he comes. He's like super excited right now. Look at him. Look at him just coming on in with this <laughs> with this giant donut. He's got a giant chocolate donut. He's really excited to share with y'all. Hi, Phoenix. How are you doing today? How's it going? Steve says hi. I think he's going to stop. There you go. He just wanted to come in and just squeak a couple times, you know, and then he just wants to chill in the background. So you'll see his little butt right there. <laughs> Corgis are so funny. What a funny little guy. It's and, and, and for some reason, it happens when I start streaming too. Because I think like as soon as my dogs are sleeping, they hear me talking. They're like, oh, what's going on? What's going on over there? Is there some action over there? And they try to come in and they try to like, you know, barge it and like be a part of it. So you're just chilling right now. You guys eat anything yummy for lunch or anything? Oh. I've been eating um, my the same thing that I've uh, been eating for the past couple of days. I don't know. I'm starting to get sick of it, though. But I don't like cooking in small batches. I like to do large batches. And when I made my pot roast, there was like, there's probably like 20 servings in there. And I've just been eating it for like lunch and dinner. Oh, my God. I'm getting sick of it, though. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Hi, Queen. How are you doing today? Woohoo! Made it to your live. Oh, wait. Did I update my... Okay, good. Yay. You guys are here. The YouTube chats. Oh, let me make my screen smaller. But yay, welcome! Hi, Cecilia. How are you doing today? I was just talking about my uh, my day yesterday. So yesterday, I had to do a very short stream um, on Twitch because I was brushing my Invisalign tray yesterday or my, my retainers, whatever you want to call it, and it snapped. And I was like, oh my god, no! Because for those of you guys, you guys have forgotten your teeth straightened, um, you're bound to having to wear trays for the rest of your freaking life. Otherwise, your teeth might shift back and be raw candy. 
So that kind of sucks. But I, I snapped my Invisalign tray and um, I had to call the dentist and I was like, <laughs> I need to get another one. Do you guys, do you guys have my like, my moldings on file? Like, can you just order another one? But you know, they, they want you to come in the dentist, I guess, and waste your time. I don't know why. It's just, it's so annoying. Don't they have like a 3D image of it? Can't they just upload it and just make it based off there? I don't know. Maybe I'm just thinking a little too futuristic. Maybe they don't have that capability. Um, hi Richard, how are you doing today? Hello Corgi Sun, greetings from Snowy, Springfield, Missouri. Gizmo says hi. I reheated frozen ravioli and pasta sauce for lunch. Did you make it yourself? I went to Trader Hose yesterday and I got um I got some fresh fresh pasta that's gluten free. And it's actually not that bad. It's pretty good. It still has like the firm consistency and like if you like um if you like al dente pasta, it's uh it's pretty good. So Oh no, sorry. Well, so we went to the dentist. Um, I streamed for like two hours, I think, and then went to the dentist abruptly. And dude, the traffic was horrible. The GPS was like, oh, it's gonna take you like an hour and a half to get home. And I'm just like, <laughs> so I, I need to hit up a new dentist. Oh God, it's, it's just so far, man. Usually when I go to the dentist, I go to like 8 a.m. in the morning. I try to get it out of the way, come back, we're good, Gucci. You know, no traffic or anything like that. But, bro, yesterday was just bad, man. Yesterday was just horrible. Hi, Grits. Hi, Fish. It's pouring. Oh, Fish, you're in Atlanta? Why didn't I remember that? It's pouring in Atlanta. Severe warning and everything. Oh, is it so funny? Yesterday, uh, I was telling everyone about the rain that we got in LA and how there was, like, flash flood warnings and blah, 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 blah. And then one of my mods, bleep if you're here, one of my mods was like, oh, don't be wishing rain on us in Georgia. And I was like, oh, you guys are gonna get any rain. You'll be fine. You're gonna get snow probably. But it's actually kind of hilarious that it's pouring in Atlanta. Uh, I hope you guys are okay and stay safe because I, I, I don't know, man. The, the crazy rain that we've been having in LA, it's freaking annoying. It's annoying. It's leaking everywhere in uh, one of the rooms and it's just giving me a, I don't know, it's a freaking nightmare right now. I hate rain. Uh, you got them from Walmart. I don't have time to make no pasta. Someone in my chat sent me um, squid ink pasta. And I was like, ooh, that sounds delicious. And then they sent me a link to the Amazon. It was so expensive. <laughs> I was like, ha. I, I felt like it was like two little mini packets for like 20 bucks or something. I don't know, man. I didn't realize how, how pricey squid ink pasta was. I thought they were just, you know, bumping up the price because it sounded fancy in restaurants. But apparently if you buy it from the stores, it's pretty pricey still. Hi, E. How are you doing today? Hello. E. What is going on? You been playing some uh, Overwatch or are you focusing a lot on uh, school lately? I need a new yoga studio too. Mine is too far. Dude, I used to do yoga. We used to do... Um... Oh, what is that? Joe! Joe, thank you so much for tier one subscriber or wait, what is it? tier? Oh, okay. It's a membership thing. It's so Twitch and YouTube, they use different terms for subscribers and memberships. And I always get them mixed up. But Joe, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Welcome. And uh, thank you so much for membershipping. <laughs> you know how we say subscribing on Twitch? On YouTube, we say membershipping. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. I have something a bit disturbing, but not sure at what level. I was more of a witness to it. Ooh, it's creeping my opinion. Do you think I can share and you can tell me your point of view on it? Yeah. Is it just like uh like a story or something? Sure. I grew up in Palmdale. We go to LA a little bit, uh about to hit the UCLA Medical Center. It's been about three hours in traffic. Oh yeah. You gotta like plan your way around traffic. It is Honestly, though, I remember um, I called my bank and I had to get something done. And the guy was just trying to make small talk. You know, he's like, oh, so you live in L.A. Like, how do you like L.A.? I'm like, eh, you know, it's cool. It's cool. And he's like, yeah, I could never move to like big cities because, you know, I just can't stand traffic. You know, he's like, I would never move to New York. I would never move to L.A. And I forgot what was the other one that he said. And I was like, well, I mean, you just plan your life around traffic. And he was like baffled that I said that. And I was like, yeah, like just plan your life around fucking traffic. Like if you don't want to sit in traffic, plan your life around it, okay? If you don't want to sit in traffic, try not to work far away from where you live and all that stuff. So yeah, you got to plan your life around it. <laughs> Hi, Ollie. Um, hello all the way from the UK. Uh, how's the weather in the UK right now? When When is the best time, in your opinion, to go visit the UK? And what do you think is the cheapest? 
Good afternoon, Corgi and Chad. How are y'all doing? Dude, thank you so much for the tier one. I appreciate it. Thank you. I am membershipping. What's a better term for it? Because you should be seeing like subscribing on Twitch, but subscribing and, you know, YouTube and stuff like that. It's like whole different meanings. It's delicious. Used to work at a shop that sold the... Uh, oh, you should sold that. Balsamic vinegar, olive oil, spices, good money in that industry. I'm good. I just got out of class early. So I'm going to be on Overwatch later. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yesterday I was like, ain't nobody up right now, but I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play Overwatch by myself. It was horrible. It was so bad. Like, ah, oh, I don't know. I think, I think I'm gonna start playing in comp because, you know, it's not the people's fault if they're like new and they're bad to, you know, the, the, non-ranking games right but like oh my god like i don't know it just gives me a headache when like people are just like all over the place and i just wanted like i just want to just want to like <laughs> the corgi club welcome to the corgi club or the corgi cult <laughs> uh yeah I, I think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna try rank um because at least with rank you know um it kind of filters out like the super 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 newbies but i don't know we'll see I don't know if I want to be stuck with like a bunch of like sweaty tryhards though, but you know deep down inside I guess I am a sweaty tryhard. Corgi, did you see the traffic during the holidays while the LA transplants were stuck in the snowstorm? It was amazing. I went from Valley to Pomodo in like 45 to 50 minutes. <laughs> no, I did not. I um honestly I felt like I feel like during the holiday season it was still kind of like busy and hectic. Although I will say Thanksgiving was good because I think people in LA tend to leave LA for Thanksgiving. But when I went to the airport uh, for Christmas, it was kind of a shit show. I mean, to be honest, it was kind of messy. And I was like, mm, people need to get out of the town more often. Uh, rainy and very windy. Best time to visit is, oh, the summer. Unfortunately, just like everywhere else, the price is just silly. Oh, no. So that's what I heard. I heard it rains a lot in the UK. Mm. Mm. I was going to go to um, Japan. I don't know if we still are, though. We're planning to go to Japan in springtime. But I was like, man, there's going to be like, I don't know. I don't like crowds, okay? I don't want. I don't like when there's a lot of people and there's crowds and like. <sighs> so I, I, I heard that like the best time to go to Japan is actually during the winter time. And it's the winter time right now. <laughs> but it's probably too late to go because you probably have to like plan things and book things ahead of time and all that. Yeah, I agree. At least rank. You'll get everyone trying in bit. Um, you live in a neighborhood full of meth heads. Um, I plan my life around my neighbors being bigger weirders than me, and I have a squirrel. We'll stay safe out there and get some good security, and, um, yeah, take care of yourself. I don't know if I can name people. Don't, don't name them, then. <laughs> so you went to a restaurant and later at, like, 3 a.m., you received a massive text message and was told that while we were at the restaurant, this guy recorded? Ew, so it's gonna be, like, a creepy person? Uh, Japan in October is awesome. I went to Japan in October. It rained every day. It was wild. Actually, I take that back. Out of the 10 days that I was there, it rained nine days. But other than that, it was fine. But it was just really bad rain. And I was just, it was just driving me nuts or something like that. So it was just horrible. You just gotta out crazy them. I don't know if you wanna out crazy someone that might have nothing to lose. Cause you gonna lose. <laughs> Uh, a group of girls were sitting in front of us while waiting in line. The video was about 10 minutes long and a couple photos. The focus point was on their butts and videos of them. Ew. Gross. I would totally call out and then just like maybe tell the security or something. Tell the girls. I don't know, dude. That's so freaking creepy. You know, in um, Korea or I think there's some other countries as well. But like in Korea, uh, you are not. The phones are made in a way where if you record or if you take pictures, it has to make a sound. So I thought that was interesting. Um, I wonder if it's like that in Japan, too. Uh, Derek Van Shaker, body language guy, claims the killer has new cuts in his face and serving jail time. He does. I saw um, the, what's it called? I saw the video footage and he's got like little cuts right here, but it, it could look like it might be like shaving. Because from my understanding, um, he's not supposed to be like, you know, chilling with the general population. I think he's like isolated and stuff like that. So maybe he was given like a razor blade of some sort. And I don't, do you even get razor blades? Maybe it's like supervised or something. But yeah, there was like some cuts on his face that I noticed. Or maybe he scratches himself. I don't know. Uh, you have a six foot six Russian for a roommate. Six foot six. Jesus. Corgi, no lie. When I'm working with psych patients out crazy, it works a lot. My friend works uh, with psych patients. And I, I, I don't think she tries to out crazy them. Can you give me an example? <laughs> also, um, 
you have any uh, interesting stories? It is in uh, Japan. Hello, it's my first time in your live stream. Hi, Greeny Beanie. How are you doing today? I fell in love with your shorts during the Debbie Hurt trial. I need to start working on shorts. Apparently, YouTube's going to start paying for shorts in uh, like February or something like that. But, oh, man, it was... Uh, I worked I worked a lot. I put in a lot of hours during the Depp Herd trial. And it's, it's very time-consuming. But thank you so much. I, I hope I start doing shorts again soon. I've just been really um, lazy, I guess. <laughs> but thanks for popping in. I appreciate that. That will work, too. So the very few people that I know, I'm one of them, don't see it that bad. I'm thinking, what? Don't see it that bad. You're killing... Wait, you're thinking killer status. Wait, well, I'm so confused with that statement right there. I have a friend who went to college. Oh, went to that college in uh, in Idaho. Y'all see that Netflix has the Hatchet Hitchhiker documentary up? No, I did not. Um, thank you for the update. I know I cried because I felt so bad. I wish I could have told them or report them, but they're extremely close to your family. And I guess at the time they were working out in their marriage. Wait, the guys that were taking the videos? You knew them? Eee. If you just have like a nice little sit down and just be like, hey, you know, it's kind of kind of creepy. I don't know, man. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. Your Debbie Heard coverage was the best. Thanks, James. Uh, hey, A, how are you doing today? Speaking of Heard, who posted a picture of Amber on the sidewalk on the Discord? I want to thank you for ruining my appetite. Oh my god, what is it? I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Where is it? Is it in the true crime or... I'm scared to look at it. Are we all gonna throw up or something like that? Aw, thanks, Greedy Beady. I appreciate it. I was really proud of myself during the Depth Her trial because, like, I was really into it. Um, and, like, reading all the, like, the, what's it called? The court transcripts from the UK and all that stuff. And, like, it was really cool because, like, a lot of reporters and a lot of other YouTubers, they had a lot of materials before the depth uh her trial even you know became a thing it was like way before so gotta thank those other people uh, especially like incredibly average i watched a lot of his videos and it was like pretty informative that's how i found you but thanks for popping in i appreciate it what's going on with amber well uh the only update that we've got so far is that you know she sold her home in yucca valley and her insurance companies that paid for her trial stuff uh, they're suing each other right now. They're suing her right now. We'll have to see what happens with that. Uh, she upped and moved to Spain, apparently. And, you know, is taking care of her kid. And it seems like she's just living her life out there. She was going to appeal. Because she appealed, Johnny Depp's team responded and appealed as well. They went back and forth a little bit. And then, you know what? A couple weeks ago, she decided to drop it and not appeal. And um, they settled uh, to pay Johnny Depp $1 million. And Johnny Depp says he was going to take that $1 million. And he's going to... Actually, actually, and not pledged, you know, he was going to actually, uh, well, pledge to donate to charity. So, but we know, like, you know, when it, when it comes to pledge in Amber Heard's term versus Johnny Depp's, I'm pretty sure Johnny Depp's going to actually really pledge the money. So, and actually pay. So, <laughs> but that's about it. Uh, that's about the only update that we've got so far. Um, I haven't really heard too much going on. Um, I would imagine that she would just take this time to kind of just focus on raising her kid, you know? Maybe, like, just fuck off for a little bit. And I'm sure, like, she's not going to be completely blacklisted from coming back to Hollywood. You know, I'm sure she might be, maybe in a couple of years, maybe she'll be offered some roles here and there, and she'll just slowly work her way, you know, maybe build her career again. We'll see. I don't know. She still did a really crappy thing. Oh, sad thing, though. Did you guys hear how Jeff Beck, he passed away suddenly? It's so sad. Who's the kid's daddy? A lot of people think it's uh, Elon Musk. I don't know if it's been confirmed, but has it been confirmed? I don't know. Probably Elon Musk, maybe. Yeah, it was so sad. I can't believe Jeff Beck passed away. Uh, um, If you guys don't know who Jeff Beck is, he was just recently touring with Johnny Depp. So Jeff Beck is like apparently like a legendary guitarist, I believe. Um, I didn't really listen to his music or anything like that back then. But legendary guitarist from the UK. Um, after the, uh, well, actually during when the verdict was coming out, Johnny Depp was on tour with Jeff Beck, and you know they had an album made together called 18. And it's really sad he just passed away. I mean, even though you know he is in his 70s, but he like suddenly contracted bacterial meningitis and died. So it's really sad. But you know, I'm glad that. At least you get to live into your 70s. You know, that's pretty good. And he got to, like, tour. Like, dude, like, being in your 70s and, like, going and, like, like doing music and all that stuff. Like, staying up. But, like, that's wild. Um, I hope I have that energy when I'm uh, 
when I'm that old. Because I feel like I don't got that energy right now. Right now, I'm just like, I just want to chill. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, I haven't really heard anything too crazy going on. Um, Hi. You have a gift for covering true crime in a community and being your magical, hilarious, and relatable self all at the same time. Why, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys being here and popping in. Uh, his wife right now is focused on working it out, and she's so focused on finding him more attractive than he does her. Relationship stuff is hard. Honestly, like, I let people just do their thing, you know? Unless it's, like, someone that's really close to me. Like, if it's, like, siblings. I mean, honestly, even with siblings, I don't really chime in too much. I just let people do their thing. Um, like, my sister has been in some really crazy, you know, crazy relationships. And um, there are times where, like, I'll give her my two cents. But for the most part, as long as not, like, you know, of course, like, physically abusive or, like, any other sort of, like, crazy abusive in another way. I, I just usually just let people do their thing, you know. There's, like, really no... <laughs> hey, hello? Are you okay? <laughs> I don't know, he's, like, geeking out back there. Oh, okay. He's chill now. He's chill. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Steve says hi, though. <laughs> he just randomly just, like, does random things. And I'm just like, what is this guy doing? Hello? Are you okay? Uh, shoot. What was I talking about again? Oh, yeah. Relationship stuff. For the most part, I just stay out of it. I let people do their thing. Um, yeah. People, people will... Sometimes people will turn against you if, uh... Even if you're trying to do what's best for them they'll sometimes turn against you. So, I don't know. It just really depends on dynamics, of course. Of course you have a gorg. It's amazing. I got two of them. There are the other ones sleeping in the hallway right there next to our little uh, space heater. But uh, this is Steve right there. And then Cheryl's, uh, he's over there. So, yeah, these guys are just, they're just chilling right now. You know, they're little troublemakers. Yeah, that's basically what I told her. I still find it very disturbing that he recorded them. I suggest he could help immediately. I don't know, man. Yeah, that's like, that's kind of awkward. Um... I try to honestly like there, you know, like sometimes when you grow up with people that at the time it's just like, oh, it's like really funny and you're just like chilling with the homies and stuff like that. But like as you get older and you realize that they still haven't really matured and you're just like, mm, you know what? I think I'm just going to I do my own thing over there. Y'all stay over there. I'll be over here. OK, we good. <laughs> I still feel like killers start doing a lot of stuff like this. Well, I don't think that would be like a mega indicator. You know, there might have to be like other things that would indicate if they are like potential killers like maybe if they're like really abusive and like if they're like torturing animals or something like that i don't know i would just say it's just like you know just really strange and gross behavior corgi have i seen the tiktok of the ladies corgi that throw his toys up on her desk oh my god i did it's so cute <laughs> he's 30 years old i don't know man yep pretty weird honestly i don't know I mean, you told her the ball's in her court. It's up to them what they want to do, you know? It's up to them. Uh, honestly, I think it's more stress-free if you just... Uh, stress-free if uh, you kind of just let people do their thing. I don't know. It's tough, though. I know sometimes it's really hard, especially if you're, like, really close to them. And you're just like, oh, but I don't want my, you know, my close friend or my sister or my brother to be with this, like, horrible person, you know? But, you know, sometimes it's just they got to do what they got to do. Hi, Jill. How are you doing today? How's it going? Did anyone watch the uh, the status hearing this morning with Brian Koberger? So there's a couple of things that I wanted to watch. And by the way, guys, if you guys are new here, don't forget to join the Discord. The link is in the About Me below, so join the Discord. Also, uh, we have some videos coming out soon, but I, I uploaded the videos of uh, Meg the Stallion and immediately they were hit with the uh, the monetization thing. But um, one of them actually got monetized right away. And I was like, oh, well, I wonder if I submitted for a manual review. I wonder if the other two will be okay. So one of them was okay as well. So I think sometimes YouTube, they like freak out a little bit, you know, at certain like names or certain like uh, keyword terms. But once they review it, they're like, oh, okay. It's actually like, it's all right. So the reason why I haven't posted it up, up yet is because I was just waiting for YouTube to just do its thing. So we're just waiting right now. But um, yeah, hopefully that will come out soon. <laughs> um, it might it might come out in a couple of days. Well, 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 Palermo 180. I just want to let you guys know Palermo 180 is from my Twitch. And uh, they, you know, they we, we have a very strange relationship because Palermo, he lives in a cupboard. 
in Australia, kind of like the Harry Potter situation, and he likes to come in here and troll once in a while. And uh, he's he's also really short, so he likes to project sometimes and say that I'm really short. But he's really like a hobbit, and I'm like Gandalf. Hi, Palermo. How are you doing today? <laughs> Maybe I should just make you into a mod so people know that I know who you are. I wish they had a um, like a VIP setting in uh, in YouTube, but they don't. So like on Twitch, if you don't give people mod status, you can give them like VIP. But I don't know if that's a real thing. Hi, I do enjoy the true crap content. You're a wizard, Palermo. <laughs> Have you ever seen the dire trip? Oh my goodness. Um, Jill, I haven't, I don't believe I've seen that exact video, but the story of Junko is so sad. It's, it's bizarre, crazy, wild, and it honestly just makes me angry because it's probably one of the craziest, heinous, true crime cases I've ever heard. Aside from the Hello Kitty one, there was one that was like really just almost as bad too. It was like the Hello Kitty one. I don't know if you heard of that one as well, but, um, the fact that her... The people that did it, did those things to her are like free and walking today. It's pretty messed up. But, you know, I get it. Like Japan back then, their law system was like, I don't know, like super archaic in my opinion. Like I think um, one of the craziest thing about Japan. Oh, God, I don't know. There was this video that I did about a woman who a woman who murdered her co-worker because she was jealous of her. They were both working like the host industry in Japan. She was like jealous of her, but then she also wanted to like take all her money, her jewelry and stuff like that. And then she ended up being on the run. And during that time, Japan had a law where the, oh man, what was it again? I think like if you weren't caught for 10 years, then you're good. The statute of limitations, yeah, was only 10 years, I think. Or was it 15 years? Oh, I don't remember. So what people would tend to do is that, you know, if you committed a crime in Japan, like something as bad as like murder, you just, you know, kind of just lay low for 10 to 15 years and then afterwards they can't charge you. So they were going after this woman and she was like laying low. She had plastic surgery. She was like having all these disguises and stuff like that. And she was like so close with getting away. I think she was almost at, I forgot it was like 10 or 15 uh, years, but she was so close. And then they finally were able to catch her. Like literally, like, I don't know, maybe like within hours of the status of limitation. Like, I don't know, it was like, it's like crazy. But, um, yeah, I think for, for Junko though, what was it? I think it was just, oh man, I don't know why, I don't know why the sentence was so light in that case. I don't remember, but, um, yeah, Junko was just as bad as the Hello Kitty, um, case. I don't know if you're, if you know about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the worst trick I've ever seen, more worse but Hello Kitty so far. I don't know, man. To me, they were, I, I think they were just as bad. Although the Hello Kitty one, I don't remember what happened to the people. Um, I don't know if they're like still in jail or if they only served a couple of years or something like that. But yeah, it was, both of them were really bad. Um, those are the two that I always like, you know, just like remember like the gruesome, crazy details. But one that actually always stuck with me was uh, Lady Yong. There's um, this other true crime YouTuber. Her name is like Grazy TV, I think. I think that's her name. Uh, she did a video about Lady Om, and it was about this woman, a uh, Korean woman, who would marry men. She would prick their eyes with the needle, causing them to go blind. And the men wouldn't know what happened to them. They're just like, oh my God, I woke up one day and I'm blind. And they would go to the hospital. The doctor's like, I don't know what happened to you, but damn, you're blind. I guess that sucks. And so she would collect like insurance money from her husband's going blind. And then all of a sudden there would be like a fire and they would be, you know, they would be killed in a fire. And so she would collect like double insurance. So one from her husband going blind and one from the death of her husband in a fire. And so she did this to like, I don't know, I think like two of her husbands. But not only that, she did it to her own mom, her brother, because she was really greedy. She was trying to collect that insurance money. Uh, there was a friend that helped her out and let the, the friend let her stay at the apartment because like, you know, this woman was like, basically like people were dying on her. And like, you know, there was all this like tragic stuff happening. And so the friend let her stay with her and then she does the same thing, but not to the friend. She actually did it to the husband, to the friend's husband. And then I think she like may have killed the friend's like kid or something. Like, I don't know. Like it was, it was wild, man. This woman was like, 
dude, she was wild. I, I try to look up details about it because I did want to learn more. But I think it's one of those where um, you need to you need to know Korean to really get into like the Korean websites and get more information. Because I couldn't really find much um, when I like try to Google it, you know, look for like English websites. But yeah, full detail. My mom and I've seen decades of shows from Justice File, Forensic, Bailey, Syrian, Mr. Fallen, Dire Trick Lady, Masquerade. We agreed it is the worst. Yeah, I've never I haven't seen the full detail one, but um, I've heard like details about it, like that one and the Hello Kitty one. But yeah, and Mr. Ballin. Oh God, I love watching Mr. Ballin stuff. He, Mr. Ballin is what got me through going to the gym like last year when I was like, I don't want to go to the gym. Oh, but I get to listen to Mr. Ballin. Okay, sure, let's do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was, that was wild. Nobody saw a pattern. I mean, this was like, this was like back then. Um, I don't know how long ago it was. Wasn't it back in like, I don't know, 80s, 90s, maybe even before then, I'm not sure. But like, for example, right? Think of like, you guys ever listen to stories about people like, you know, unaliving their kids or their their like wives and family and stuff like that because they want to collect the insurance money. And it's like if when we look at it in retrospect, we're like, wait, how do they not know this was happening? Like this is their third wife and wife one, wife two or unalive. Like obviously when it happened to third wife, like how do they not know this was like a, this was like a pattern? Like how did the insurance company, you know, like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's tough, right? But there's probably just like a disconnect between all the insurance companies, like, you know, because they're not going to communicate with each other, right? And then maybe they moved around to different states. So maybe like the police weren't talking to each other. And maybe they really did truly think that it was an accident. So it's not until when like the second or third time, maybe like you really want to look into it, then you start getting suspicious. Um, like the one that I was watching, um, I don't know if it was a Mr. Ballin video. Whose video was it? It was. Oh, no, it was. Um... Oh, there's another true crime channel. Um, oh, I forgot the name. They, it's oh man, they they do so they do so well at narrating it. It's like a dark. It's either like um, a, a man's voice or a female's voice. I forgot. It's a huge uh, true crime channel right now too. I think it blew up within the past two uh past two years. Oh, I forgot the name. But um, there's this one case about a guy who called nine one one because or sorry, uh, wife comes home. And wife sees that the son was was like trapped under like a tractor or something. The husband's there. They call 911. But then, um, you know, 911 is like, oh, try to do CPR. And the husband's like, I can't. Like his chest is crushed. Like he's gone. He's not here anymore. And so I think that was also probably another case of like insurance fraud and like being really greedy and stuff like that. And I think how they started investigating him was because the wife had suspicious uh, has suspicions about, you know, the guy and like how it happened. And like she's like, well, how did this happen? Like. You know, when, where were you? Were you home? Were you this and that and stuff like that? And so, like, I think she has suspicions because apparently he had, he was, like, married before and, like, something had happened to them. And I think she started, like, you know, thinking, like, oh, my God, maybe this guy, like, actually did it to collect the money. Oh, Ewu. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's the one. Yeah, Ewu. So I wanted to watch that. I watched the beginning of it. Um, I, I haven't finished it yet. But Ewu, when I, when I watch True Crime, if I see that it's more than, like, I don't know. Sometimes if it's like three hours long, I'm like, oh god, three hours, man, that's a long time. I don't know. There, I I like how their videos are long though, because that means like more information and stuff like that. But sometimes it's like, oh, it's too long. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I, I like I like shorter formats. Like 20 minutes is like just a sweet spot for me. 30 minutes maybe. Uh, no internet. LOL. I remember the Hello Kitty was back in the 90s. You were in like high school, you think? Yeah, I don't know. It that gave me nightmares. Honestly, it was. It, it, it just gave me goosebumps oh oh like I, I was like generally like i feel like i would just get nightmares from that like i don't know about it it's, it's just so it's just so creepy and so scary and hello kitty was something that like we grew up with and like i don't know i can't look at hello kitty the same way anymore it, it just gives me the creeps all right y'all let's um let's jump into this really quick but yeah thanks for i appreciate like you know you guys being here and doing all this like chatter small talk and stuff like that um i really like the style of like streaming where you just sit here and just chat with people <laughs> Uh, type oh Typiera, I don't know if I pronounced that right. Typiera, uh, that case still haunts me every day. It's so sad how no one was really looking for her, and the killers got such a short sentence. I know they're still around. They're still alive. Japan is weird. I don't know. I mean, I, I think they're starting to update their laws. Uh, from what I've heard now, for like their you know if you commit murders, there's no statute of limitation because initially it was like ten to fifteen years, and they increased it like twenty or something, and then now they're like okay fine, there's no statute of limitations. So I'm like, oh, thank goodness. Um, but for 
that one and you guys ever heard about the um the japanese man who was a like a student in france and he unalived another student but then he was like trying to be a cannibal or something and he was never really formally charged i don't think um like the i think he was like part of a really rich family the family had like connects and stuff like that he was brought back to japan and like I, I don't I don't know I feel like he didn't really serve a day I don't think I don't think he was really punished or anything but not only that he just became like a Japanese celebrity and so like he had like these books and stuff he was like you know he gets like notoriety for talking about like how he consumed human flesh and I don't know I just feel so bad for the the victim's family it's just like really it's just really messed up it's like really sad but um one of them went to stab another person in their mid-20s one of um and got released oh i don't know i feel like i maybe remember that um i gotta rewatch the videos i don't remember wait so they got released again oh jeez, i don't know huh. all right y'all so uh let's start off today we're gonna uh watch idaho suspect brian koberger if you guys don't know who brian koberger is or if you haven't been following this uh case um, about in November, there was a 911 call and they found four students. Uh, they were dead in their home that they were renting uh, near their college campus. And so it took investigators quite a while for them to find someone, but they were doing the investigation. And it wasn't until a couple weeks ago, I think the end of December, like right before the new year, that they arrested someone, um, not in Idaho, actually. They arrested someone halfway across the country, all the way in Pennsylvania, if I remember correctly. Pennsylvania, I think, yeah. Brian Koberger. I did a stream last week where we went over the probable cause affidavit. Uh, it's a police report that details why they think Brian Koberger did it, all the evidence that they had leading up to it, or not maybe not all, but like, you know, some of the evidence that led up to it. So we had the um, surveillance footage. So maybe like in the neighborhood, uh, surrounding areas, the roads, the grocery stores and stuff like that. Uh, they had his um, his uh, phone information. They were able to contact AT&T and find out like which cell towers were pinged and like what area he was in uh, before the murders, during the murders and a little bit after the murders as well. And what else was there? Oh, and then the DNA evidence. So at the crime scene, they did not find the actual murder weapon. Uh, the murder weapon is like a sort of type of like a military knife. I think it's called like a K a K bar knife or something of that sort, uh, which actually you can actually just like you can actually just buy it. You don't have to actually be in the military to get a hold of that type of knife, but it is like a military type of knife or not military to say, was it Navy? Was it a Navy knife? I think it was Navy, but um, they were able to find a knife sheath that was left behind uh, in the crime scene. And on the bottom of that knife sheath, uh, they found his DNA and they were able to match that DNA with trash that was thrown away and the DNA matched like his father's DNA or something like that. So, um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. So right now, uh, last week, they did the initial hearing and his lawyers requested for a status hearing because, you know, she said that they weren't ready to do a preliminary hearing because they just got the case. So they need to, like, you know, speed up on things like that. It needs to be more. Uh, they need to talk to their client, Brian Koberger, and be more, you know, maybe like have a story to get like, hey, Brian Koberger, like what happened? Like, where were you? Like, how do you explain this, that, and whatever. So that was the initial hearing last week. And today we are doing the status hearing. It is very short and brief though, but uh, we will see Brian Koberger. Brian Koberger. K-Bar says military spec. Civilians can purchase uh, surplus doors too. You're on your phone right now, so not sure of delays. Uh, sorry if you're late on comments. No, it's all good. You're fine. Navy's military. Yeah, I just wanted to be more specific though, because I think they specifically said it was like a Navy uh, sort of knife. Interesting. Last I heard, they thought it was a roommate that had been kicked out or something. Um. Oh no, maybe that was like from a couple weeks ago. Um, but yeah, they, they cleared the roommates, they cleared, um, you know, there was like significant others of the victims, they cleared them as well. Uh, there was like an Uber Eats or DoorDash delivery driver that came by, they cleared them. So they cleared a lot of people and it ended up being someone that possibly may not even have any connections to any of the victims. But I don't know, we don't have that information yet. So far, they said that like they don't think he has any connection with the suspects and he might just like chose them at random. But they're trying to determine how he chose that and why maybe so we'll see you think he's toast g fink 
The fact that he stuttered before during the murder is crazy. By that, I mean how he kept driving by, like hesitant, had to psych himself to do it. Oh, that's a very interesting way to look at it. Um, another way was people, or maybe even both too, people thought that, you know, he was kind of just scoping out, you know, just scoping out the house to see who goes in and out, you know, what time they're home, what time they're not home and stuff like that. So yeah, or he could be psyching himself out as well. So we don't know, but we'll maybe find out maybe in a couple of months. So, uh, let's watch this part a little bit and then we'll talk a little bit more. And there are people that are saying, I don't know, take a look at his face. Let me know what you guys think. <gasps> Mr. Cowbugger? That's him. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing at the freeze frame because his eyes his eyes be a little look a little a little crazy right there. One second, let me I think we're good right there. <laughs> Alright, y'all. Idaho uh murder suspect Brian Kobrick appears in court for a status hearing. Uh, this is in Lata County in Idaho. Is the audio really low? Hold on a second. Let me bump up the audio really quick. Oh, fuck. I forgot to turn off my music. Okay, we should be good. Look at him just strolling in there. I wonder, is he is he handcuffed in any way? I mean, his hand's obviously not, but I wonder if he has like little, little ankle cuffs on. Yeah, and people were saying, I, I, mean, I mean, I don't know. Look at his face. People were saying there was like scratch marks on his face. Two nine two 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 eight zero five. This is State of Idaho versus Brian Koberger. Mr. Koberger is in custody. He is appearing here in court with his attorneys, Ms. Taylor, Mr. Logsdon, Mr. Thompson, Ms. Jennings appearing on behalf of the state. This is the time set in the matter for the preliminary hearing status conference. So I am going to inquire of counsel, Ms. Taylor, what's the status? at this time. Thank you, Your Honor. We are going to ask the court to set. Oh my God. No! <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I muted it earlier. <laughs> oh my gosh. What was I saying? Um, rewind. I was talking about his, uh, his attorney. This is Ann Taylor. <laughs> what a noob thank you y'all um so this is ann taylor uh if i remember correctly she is his public defender that was appointed to him now in idaho county there are four public defenders that they have which seems really low to me like only four public defenders what the heck but i don't know there's four public defenders two recused themselves and the other two i don't know what happened to them um uh, weren't able to work on this case but they appointed ann taylor and she's from a different county in idaho and she has to drive like an hour or two or something like that just to get over to Brian Koberger. That is at this time. Thanks. So I feel bad for her is what I'm saying. Because not only does she got to commute for her, she got to represent this person. But, you know, she's a lawyer and I'm sure she doesn't mind. Thank you, Your Honor. We Everyone are going needs to fair representation, right? to set preliminary hearing. Sorry, I'm like talking over her. Let me not talk over her. I didn't see any scratches in the traffic stop videos. Yeah, people were just saying, they're like, oh my God, there's like scratch in his face. Like, was he in a fight or something? But from my understanding, he's separated from like general population. He's like in isolation. So maybe he was shaving. Maybe he scratched himself. I don't know. We don't know. Thank you, Your Honor. We are going to ask the court to set preliminary hearing out into June. We would June. request the third or fourth week of June and probably four or five days for preliminary hearing. So again, we had the initial hearing last week and his lawyer, Ann Taylor, was like, oh, you know, 
can we not do the preliminary hearing um, sometime soon? Like, we need to catch up on this case a little bit. Can we do a status hearing? So that's what we're doing right now. This is the status hearing. And now at the status hearing, now we're going to schedule out when we're going to do the preliminary hearing. Mr. Koberger understands his right to a timely preliminary hearing, and he's willing to waive the timeliness to allow us time to obtain discovery in this case and be prepared. Yeah, because what are what, what's your um, if you want your preliminary hearing in like ASAP, right? What's like the time frame again? Is it is it like fourteen days? Does anyone know? I don't know why fourteen days is like in my head. Like if you want to have like a preliminary hearing and you want to have like in a speedy time, I think it's supposed to be like you're you're allowed to get it like at least like maybe fourteen days, but I don't remember. And Mr. Thompson, are you in agreement with that? Yeah, I was pulling that out of my butt. Well, the state has no objection to that, Your Honor. Ms. Taylor reached out to us by email yesterday with her proposal. On reflection, the state's calendar would be better in the month of July, but we will make the end of June work if that supports preference. And I haven't had a chance to talk to Wow, June. June of 2023. That's halfway. That's halfway through the year. You know, time is going to go by so fast. I know right now it's like, oh, my God, it's six months in June. But, like, it's going to go by so quick. Bam, it's going to be June. And we're going to be like, hey, guys, welcome back. Just tell about that. I'm sorry. I know that's the last minute. That's okay. Um, the court's calendar is going to be better towards the end of June, early July. So would that work, Ms. Taylor, for your scheduling on your other matters? Your Honor, yes. If we take that fourth week in June, that's actually best. So from what I've heard, the fact that his defense team want to push this all the way to June, it means they're going to fight this. They're, they have some things about the, I guess, the probable cause affidavit that they're going to fight. Maybe there are some holes in it, you know, but uh, we'll have to wait till then. Yeah, you so, definitely do see the Mr. Scratches Koberger, on his face. I need to speak to you for a moment then. Sir, you do understand, and Ms. Taylor has represented here, that she's advised you of your right to have... Uh, or fully discussed with you the right that you have, which is to have your preliminary hearing within 14 days. Of the oh, date 14 days. I knew I remember from somewhere. Okay. I was like, I remember hearing 14 days from somewhere. Okay. That you initially appeared. I was making it up. As you recall, uh, when I advised you of your rights, that hearing is a probable cause hearing where the state has to establish that more likely than not. Oh, Rain says there was an official statement. It was from a shaving incident. Oh, do you have that as a link? These felony offenses were committed, and you were the one that committed the felony offenses. If you waive your right to a speedy preliminary hearing, it does not mean that you're giving up your right to have a preliminary hearing. It simply means that you would not be able to come back and challenge that the state did not present probable cause within 14 days. Do you understand? Yes. But then also, like, I don't know much, but like, you know, if I didn't do it, I wouldn't want to get out of jail like ASAP. Like, no, rush the preliminary here. Give it to me in 14 days. Get me out of here. Put, making me stay here till June? Oh, my God. Hell no. Have you had <laughs> enough time to speak with Ms. Taylor about your decision to waive your right to a speedy preliminary hearing? Yes. Do you need any additional time to do so? No. Then I will ask at this time, as to the five counts, felony counts that were charged in the uh, criminal case, says I fully expect a chaos fest. He isn't used to prison razors. Yeah, he might be used to freaking Gillette, maybe Venus, or what's that other one that like always sponsors uh, Dollar Shave Club? Maybe he's used used to really nice razors, you know. But like now that he's in prison, he's like, oh damn, these razors are pretty rough. Complaint that was filed on December 29th of 2022. Are you waiving your right to a speedy preliminary hearing and agreeing that that hearing can be held outside the 14 day period? Yes. And Ms. Taylor, do you concur with his waiver? I do, Your Honor, thank you. I will find your waiver of speedy preliminary hearing is knowing, intelligently, voluntarily entered here in open court with the assistance of counsel. We will go ahead and set the matter for a preliminary hearing. So much suspense. Beginning. <coughs> Monday, June 26th. At 9 o'clock a.m. It's in my calendar. June 26th. And I will go ahead and reserve uh, the week 
so June 26th to June 30th, in the event that uh, we need all five, five days. days for presentation of evidence. And just so council knows, um, it will begin at 9 a.m. each of those days. All right, June 26th, 9 a.m. Let me look at my notes really quick. So we have preliminary, uh, preliminary hearing, and then they do arraignment where police, uh, they go over if police had a probable cause or not. Okay, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes really quick. Preliminary and then arraignment. Got it! Is there anything further to address at this time in the case, uh, Mr. Thompson? Uh, not from the state's perspective, Your Honor, no. All right. Or Ms. Taylor. No, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Koberker, then you will be remanded into custody on your same no bail at this point in time, uh, pending further proceedings. Again, we'll send notice. I wonder what his defense is going to be. What's going to be his explanations for all the cell phone tower pings, the explanation for the DNA on the ninth sheath? I bet you, like, he's probably going to say something like, oh, I knew the victims. I went to their house parties. I been there before i'm in the area or i have friends that live in that area south to council and we will be in recess for this morning thank you because what could be the other explanation right we'll have to wait and see And then uh, this popped up my feed and I haven't seen it yet. Uh, the cops visit the Idaho murders house three months before. Wait, what is this? Hold on. And I will say that uh, we have found an Elantra. For weeks, a white Hyundai Elantra was the only clue released by police in the University of Idaho quadruple murders case. Now, newly released security video shows what could be suspect Brian Koberger's white Elantra driving past the crime scene the day of the stabbings. The video shows what appears to be a white vehicle driving Oof, does it match with the cell phone tower pings? by slowing down near the King Road home. In an affidavit released last week, investigators say Koberger's phone pinged in the area of the off-campus home at about 9 o'clock the morning of the murders. Court documents also say multiple security cameras near the murder scene caught video of a similar vehicle driving by the home at least four times between 3.29 and 4.20 the morning of the murders. Experts say the video shows the vehicle speeding away from the crime scene area at about 4.20 a.m., which, according to the affidavit, is right after the murders likely occurred. More than a month later, on December 15th, Koberger was pulled over while driving his white Elantra. And we saw this footage At the time already. of the traffic stop, Koberger was in Indiana, traveling with his father from Washington to his family home in Pennsylvania. Coming from Washington State University. And again, it's going to be kind of difficult to explain this if he doesn't have any connections to any of the victims or anyone in the surrounding area because we looked at this last week as well. This is the house where it happened. Look at this. It's not like a through road or anything like that. It's not really in an area where you would just drive through just to get to on the other side. It's like it's a dead end. You would have to go here, down King Road, and this is what, Queen Road, right? Yeah, King Road, Queen Road, and it's a dead end right here. So if they can get him, because I think they actually have like, don't they have surveillance footage of him like around here and then making a U-turn or something like that? Like going down, making a U-turn and going out. So this is not really an area you would just drive through just like because it's like, you know, it's an area of where it's like heavy, high traffic and like you're trying to get from one point to another. Like you're not going through this dead end place right here. But, you know, he could say that like, oh, I was trying to go from, I don't know, maybe A&W restaurant to over here. And I was trying to cut through the neighborhood because maybe there was snow or I don't know how the weather condition was that day. And maybe I got lost. But, yeah, we'll have to wait and see, see what he says. He looks terrified. I don't know if he looks terrified. He looks angry. He's like. He got the resting uh, angry eyebrows. And you're going where? Oh. Oh, okay. After Koberger's arrest on December Thank 30th, you, investigators confirmed his white Hyundai Elantra was seized as authorities searched his parents' home in Pennsylvania. 
Koberger is expected to appear in Latah County Court on Thursday of this week. You can watch that right. Man, this is like a tall dude. Like imagine waking up seeing a dark figure in your room. This tall dude. Like he's not like like you know like muscular or anything like that, but he's a tall dude. Right here on Long still looks Cry pretty Network. threatening. Reporting for Long Cry Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie. Uh, let's see. This one was shared. The Daily Beast. Brian Koberger facial cuts from a bad shave. Sheriff. The local sheriff has an explanation. He had just had a bad shave. Latah County Sheriff Richie Skiles confirmed the bot shave in a text to the Daily Beast. Um, can they show the text message? Hi, Richter. How are you doing today? <laughs> For someone who studied criminology. I don't know. I think people are very confused about that. They're like, wait a second. This guy... Study criminology? Hello? Hello? He's doing his PhD right now? I don't know. Just because you study it, you know, it doesn't mean that you can actually take what you learned and actually put it into practice, I guess. Um, crap, I lost my, my YouTube video. Give me one second. The Daily Beast messed up my stuff. I don't know what happened there. Oh no, you think the kids got you sick? Oh, what symptoms do the kids have? Are they okay now? My, um, my friends, they, uh, they both got sick too. They had, they got COVID from their kid. The kid goes to daycare and <laughs> it sucks, man. Uh, there was a quadruple homicide in your small town in North Dakota recently. A random guy murdered four people in a business. Oh, Greeny Beanie. I think I did a YouTube video on that. Um, is this name like Chad, Chad Isaac or something like that? And was that a RJ? Oh God, I got to look this up. Chad Isaac. Because I went over that and I thought it was really wild. Um, Chad Isaac. Wait, he's dead. Yeah, R RJR Maintenance and Management in Mandan, right? Yeah, that was wild. Um, I actually talked about this too recently. Dude just like goes into a workplace and it's really sad because you could see surveillance footage of it. Like imagine being one of those people who likes to show up to work early because one, you want to get there before everyone else does. You want to get a good start and you're just a good worker. But you're greeted by a guy who's already like, you know, who breaks in and then he like comes in and like starts like murdering everyone. Like, I don't know. It's just really sad. Just like seeing the surveillance footage, like really like, oh, got goosebumps from that. Like everyone just coming in, you know, it's morning time. They're about to start their day at work. And this guy comes in, he like uh, murders like four people and then they still don't know why he did it. Like there wasn't really any connection. Um, and yeah, he's never really said anything. But yeah, I did like a YouTube video on it, but um, it was like a couple, maybe like two years ago or something like that. <clears throat> oh, actually, no, I think that's what happened was I reacted to a true crime video about it and then I talked about it. That's what it was, I think. You're always 10 minutes early, at least wait for the late ones. That's why I get to work at 8.05 a.m. What time are you due to go to work, queen? Seven? <laughs> but yeah, really sad. Wait, so he's actually, um, he's dead. Sorry, we're going to pivot a little bit. North Dakota Department of Corrections Monday morning reports convicted murderer Chad Isaac has died of self-harm. Uh, caused self-harm. The inmate was taken to an ambulance, was pronounced deceased at 624. He was 48 years old. Yeah, August 2021, Isaac was convicted of murder in April 2019 deaths of Robert Fockler, Adam Fuehler, Bill Cobb, and Lois Cobb at RJR Maintenance and Management Building in Mandan. He was sentenced to four life sentences without the possibility of parole. Yeah, super, super sad. Um, it's pretty fucking disturbing when you don't really... Because people like to know the why, right? We like to know the how, but then we also want to know the why as well. We don't have that answered. It's just... I don't know. It's just it kind of just like messes you up a little bit because you want to know why they did it. Like why? Why did you do this? Why did this happen? And especially if you're like families of the victim, you definitely want to know why. But yeah, sometimes in uh, you know certain cases, you don't get to find out why, right? He was a freaking chiropractor. <laughs> the thing that I remembered was like they went and they went to his house and he had I don't know maybe the guy's just like really unhinged. But didn't he have um, 
bullets everywhere like just like not just like out in the open but it was like in the microwave like it was just like like just sprout out everywhere like it was like really weird um let me see if i could find it R is it rjr oh my god chad isaac how do you spell his name again uh oh this one right here I'm gonna meet myself oh yeah we're watching that chapter um let me see if you can find it oh this is a different this is a different oh we talked about it this case is wild too this asian dude asian dude goes up to um this like older couple's house and just like just murders them and there's like no why or anything just freaking does it um but let me see if i find pictures god that's a horrible horrible shot oh this place right here this is his house Um, this house right here. Strong smell of bleach. They found the clothes, the mask, knives, a little pick. What's the one with the, am I thinking of a different case then? Oh, this one right here. Oh yeah, in the microwave. There you go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> why and look at look at how nasty and gross this microwave is ew well so gross okay anyways sorry we were talking about um let me go back why can't i go pee really quick i gotta pee really bad <laughs> i'll be right back. i'm gonna go use the bathroom yeah um watch um that chapter's video about it um Another really good true crime channel. I'm gonna be right back. I can use the restroom really quick. James says, do we ever know why some serial killers just wired up wrong? Yeah, I mean, there are cases where sometimes, you know, you have like an individual had a really bad um, childhood, super abusive parents, very unstable. Or you just have like, you know, sometimes it's like people that lived in, you know, maybe good families, you know, had a good mom, dad. But there's just something mentally wrong with them. Uh, Rain says, never show up to work early. Reminds me of Missy Beaver case where she was killed in the church early morning by someone dressed in police tactile gear and literally waited for her to show up. Oh, gosh. I remember hearing about that. Did they actually find the person? I remember seeing the surveillance footage. I don't know. I mean, the chances of that happening to you are probably really low. I would say there's more benefits of showing up to work early. <laughs> and that would outweigh the negative. I would take that advice and always be late to work. I don't know, man. Being late to work just give me anxiety, honestly. Just just anxiety. All his clients said he was just like a normal dude. Yeah, the chiro the people, because he was a chiropractor and the patients were like, yeah, the guy seemed fine. Um, and I think they even saw him the day, bef the day after the murders happened, right? Was it the day after? Maybe a couple hours after? Maybe a couple hours after? I don't remember. I have to watch the video. I did want to see this, though. Um, probably has nothing to do with the case, but, you know, we're curious. We want to watch it anyway. It says, cops visit Idaho murder's house three months before stabbing um, for noise complaint. ...awaits trial. We're taking a closer look at the woman representing him in the high-profile case. I do oh, sorry. This is a different video. Uh, who is defending Brian Koberger against Idaho student murderer charges? I find that you are indigent and do qualify for court-appointed counsel. I will appoint Ms. Taylor uh, to represent you in this case. 
At Koberger's initial appearance in Lataw County, Idaho last week, 57-year-old <laughs> Ann Taylor, the Kootenai County Chief Public Defender, was appointed his counsel. Kootenai County is about an hour. Yeah, so I was just talking about this. I wonder, it's, I think it's about like an hour or two an hour or two drive. One and a half north of Lataw County. What Actually, it's Weiss Council. Sydney County is about an hour and a half north. An hour and a half. Oh, what a commute. Oh. Of Lataw County. Experts we spoke to say Lataw County only has four public defenders and two recuse themselves. On top of that, it's four public defenders in one county i want to know what their caseload is this must be wild common in an underfunded public defender's office for an out-of-county public defender to be brought in if needed That's back crazy. in 2017 taylor started work as the chief public defender for kootenai county and worked with the office before that between 2004 and 2012. In the interim, Taylor spent five years at a private practice where she specialized in criminal defense. The Idaho native received her doctorate from Idaho State University in 1998 and has since practiced law on the local, state, and federal levels. While Koberger's case may be Taylor's most high-profile one yet, she previously defended Jonathan Ellington, whose case gained notoriety at the state level. Ellington was given a combined sentence of 55 years for second-degree murder and aggravated battery convictions. Taylor helped overturn the case, arguing an Idaho police officer committed perjury in the trial, inciting prosecutorial misconduct. The state Supreme Court granted Ellington a second trial, where he was later reconvicted. Since Koberger's arrest, though, multiple news outlets have reported Taylor visited the University of Idaho quadruple murder scene at an off-campus home on King Road. Koberger was arrested on December 30th, more than one month after the four students were found brutally stabbed to death. Koberger, a Pennsylvania native, was arrested at his parents' home in the Poconos. After a brief court appearance in Monroe County, Pennsylvania last week, Koberger was extradited to Lataw County, Idaho. At his initial appearance in Idaho, Taylor was appointed his counsel. Moving forward, though, Judge Megan Marshall issued a gag order in the case blocking anyone involved from discussing it publicly. Koberger is due back in court on January 12th. Reporting for Long Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie. All right, so I already mentioned that earlier. Um, this is the one I wanted to watch, sorry. I accidentally clicked on this video. Wait, noise complaint in the daytime or nighttime? Hold on a second. Body cam footage shows Moscow police officers responding to a noise complaint in the Idaho murder's house and nearby... And nearby a King Road's home three months before the stabbings on August 16. The victim shows police speaking with the victim, Kaylee Gonzalez, who guessed that the officers were there about the noise. Last night we didn't do anything. Wait, it was last night and they're visiting now? <laughs> it's like 5 30. <laughs> What's the point? I mean the time it's already it's already passed, right? I feel like if you're com if you're coming for a noise complaint, you go there to be like, hey, turn the noise down. Okay, bye, leaving. But to come like after the fact, I don't know. It's just like, okay, hey, uh, don't do it again, I guess. <laughs> Who's here? Who's the Landy Shepherd? The person that was warned for the noise last night. Yeah. Okay. We, well, one thing I will tell you is we didn't do anything last night. No worries. Na uh, neighbors are calling in again saying music's good. Okay. You guys really turn it down. Sure. Sounds, Sounds good. good. I think so. Okay. And this is this is not the house. It's just a house that's like nearby, but Kaylee Gonzalez just happened to be uh, here, I guess. The tickets get expensive. We got to come back out here and, you know, the music keeps coming up and they just keep calling. I understand that. Yeah, we'll definitely turn it down. I mean, you're probably right. off, maybe like very low volume. But we'll okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this is two different videos, I think. Okay, so this one is, well, I don't know. One of them is a house and one is a house that's nearby. A party, you can have some music. Just not loud enough for people to call in. Hey, <laughs> Wait, there's the one on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like how they're just chilling there <laughs> doing the Asian squat. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look like it's that high. So maybe it's just a cool chill spot, you know? Maybe they're really short and they just want to have like van you know, a good vantage point. <laughs> maybe they're filming a video. Should have. Uh, I know we were going to go talk to them before. But yeah, maybe do a. There is. Oh, wait, there is a couch up there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. College students, man. They're weird, okay? 
Yeah, what if we should do that next time? That's a good idea. You live here? I, I'm we both one of them. Okay. Yeah. We're both Let me grab your name. My name is Elliot, E L L I O T T. And then Lund, L U N D H. Middle initial? Uh, I have two middle names. Uh, P.S. Uh, 99. Good phone number, can Uh, uh, Got the oh, my bad. Party it up. Uh, Eric. So it's. My oh, how is the Asian squatting for that long? Is he sitting on something? My number is very similar to my mom, so I can feel it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> happens to the best. I've heard. First, I have heard. Memorized. Happens. To board. I think you guys are lucky. The little lady who lived there was gone now. I think that's a rental property now. Okay. Yeah, we definitely oh, check them. E E D. I apologize. This is our first sorry, time. Sorry about that. Day, so. uh, I understand. D O R D. But you guys obviously know the drill, <laughs> right? What's that? You guys obviously know the drill, right? Yeah. We gotta okay. be smart from now on. That would that would be a good idea. Yeah. It would be. It definitely would be. Stevie. Perfect. Again, are you guys freshmen or? Oh, we're seniors. We're seniors. seniors. Okay, so you know the drill. You know how this goes. Of course. Um, since you guys live here, you're responsible for the music. Okay. So we have to come back out. What's a noise plate ticket up to these days? Oh God, it's like. 350 oh, yeah, yeah, we don't want to pay that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a first We don't defense. want to pay that. Next time, yeah. we'll definitely take so a later at night it gets, the more expensive yeah. it gets. Yeah. Okay. So spend the money on beer instead, not on tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the music down. Have a good party. Make sure everyone's over 21. Yeah. yeah. If we do have to come back out here, you two guys are each getting quick. Got it? I understand. That's so fair. So it's on the enough, guys. So make sure the party sure. stays down. Sure. Thank you. Have a good one. Take care, guys. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Good semester. And... In some cases, like when we get here and that stereo is going, yeah. I would also go contact them because it was non-specific. Sure. And if I'm warning them, I better go fucking warn them. Too. True. And is that that's the bottom row of the house there? Which one? Well, here? That yeah. one? That one's up on, uh, goes through that driveway, the guy's walking right there. Oh, yeah. That side Hi. there. Guarantee you the stereo's going to come right back on as soon as we leave. <laughs> well, I saw that big, tall JBL on the back patio there, so I'll just go chat with them. Okay, I'll come with you. Oh, JBL? You walk up or do you wanna... uh, I got the JBL too, cereal? I got the little mini one though. Just, it wouldn't be fair, you know, if you're warning yeah. these guys, you better warn them. Yeah, good point. Moscow 11. This is the Asian squat right here. I can't do the Asian squat though. I'm still on that. Uh, I think the Asian squat requires you to be flat on your foot while you're doing it. I can't. My 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 ankles are very stiff. I can't do it. <laughs> Hopefully one day I can. But yeah. Oh, I guess I do the Western squat because I do it on my tippy toes. I don't know. Per elevates physiotherapy. I am a Western squatter. Department channel. Sorry. Can you go back? What are they talking about? Just it wouldn't be fair, you know. If you're warning yeah. these guys, you better warn them. Uh, we're warning someone. Moscow 11. He's gone now. No more squeaky toy, he says. I'm still on the department channel. Moscow 111. We're clear of 1127 King Road. We're going to be out at 1122 Queen Road. Same problem. Oh, this is the house, right? That house is familiar. Hey guys, can you send someone out who lives here, please? All right. One, one, two, two. Yep, this is the uh, this is where the murder's house. Did you get any dogs in the last night? Because I'm looking for one with Xander Dash. Nope. Sorry, you can always call us later and ask in case it gets turned in here. It's our business line. Sweet, thank you. You bet. Dude, it was so shady. I had like cops like come to my house <laughs> and they were like, um, yeah, can we like look at your um, surveillance footage? I'm like, oh, it was like so weird. I was like, um, sh sure. Yeah. Like you want me to like, like, what, what do you want? You want to like come up like in, on my computer and like look at it? Like you want me to bring my iPad out? <laughs> it was so weird. 
Uh, but I mean, I get why they're doing it because, um, you know, obviously something happened. But the guy, like, definitely, he, like, he lied to me what happened. He made it sound a lot worse. I mean, it was still bad, but he made it sound, like, way worse than it was to make it sound more um, urgent, I guess. But, yeah, it was a good thing that, like, uh, it was two guys that came, right? Initially, I, you know, I'm, I'm really, like, sus of people. But one of them had, like, a cop uniform. And the other guy was a detective wearing, like, plain clothing. But, yeah, it was just like, hey, like, uh, we noticed that you got a security cam right there. Like, can we, like, can we look at it real quick? <laughs> and I'm like, why? <laughs> but, yeah, they were trying to catch someone um, on surveillance. And they thought they might have came by this way. But, yeah, it was, like, really weird. But I definitely wasn't going to let them in. Wait, why are you in the backyard? No one's coming to the door. Oh, no one's coming to the door, so they're going to the back? Oh, this is the sliding door right here that... Yeah, so there's three floors, right? The first floor, this is where the door is. Second floor is the sliding door, and that's where one of the roommates... I think one of the roommates that saw um, Brian Kohlberger and saw that he had, like, bushy eyebrows, saying that, like, oh, he left the uh, sliding door right here. <laughs> yeah, I looked, took one look at that speaker. I said, hmm. Well, this guy, he had a breath. <gasps> <gasps> But you know what? It is August. It's probably really hot and probably really humid, okay? And the sun's just beating at them. Yo, this fish eye, fish eye lens, man. You get a lot of guys trying to argue private. Is this the killer's house? No, this is where it happened. Um, hi, Pitbull Life. How you doing today? I have a property access. The way I've always done it, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was the way I did it there. Find one responsible, have everyone else hold them accountable. If I gotta come back here, they're getting the ticket. <laughs> Who's that hand signal? Because then it's on them to nip everyone else in the bud. Yeah, and if they don't come out, we just contact landlords. Yeah. Or we come back the next day or the next time you work. And just note that you know, lack of cooperation does not go a long ways with us. <laughs> yeah. Wait, are they all in there and just ignoring the cops? I can't see. <laughs> They're probably just cleaning up, you know, making sure they hide all the paraphernalia, maybe. These are college goods, you know. But it's interesting to see the house, the backyard, and everything. Huh, you know, stairs to the back deck. Interesting. Wait, who's who's knocking? What was that knocking sound? Is the audio lag? Hey guys. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, is this your place? Yeah. Oh, the audio's delayed. Okay, I was like going crazy. I was like, wait, are they messing with the cops and they're just knocking on the window? <laughs> okay. It's I think there's an audio delay. Uh, and I assume noise. noise yeah. yeah. Oh, this is Kaylee. Yeah. Nothing against having a party. Once neighbors start calling in, they have an issue. Hi, Kaylee. Uh, you go to school? Uh, yeah. Okay. What year? Senior. Senior. Okay. So I'll take. Oh my God, she's a senior. She was. This was her last year. The same thing I told them. You probably know the drill, right? Actually, no. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. What is the drill? Like, I don't know. Like, what? What is the drill? Hey, you know the drill, right? Like, <laughs> for what? Usually, at least for me, I'll give you a verbal warning. Okay. Uh, once I have neighbors calling in, you're just too loud, you're disturbing the peace. Yeah. Nothing against having parties, nothing against having people over who are overage to drink. Mm -hmm. But again, once we start disturbing the neighbors, then we've got an issue. Yeah. You always take it as up to 300. Yeah, somewhere. I mean, that must be tough, though. If you live in a college town and you ain't a college student, I don't know, man. GTFO, it's going to be loud. They're going to have parties and stuff. That's, that's tough. Around 300, 400 okay, bucks. It's a pretty expensive ticket. I don't want to give that to you. Yeah. That being said, this is your place, so I'm going to hold you responsible. Uh -huh. They get it more expensive the later it gets. Yeah. We already warned them, yeah. too. Hey, shut up! Let him talk! <laughs> the second officer just chiming in, damn backseater. Let officer number one talk. Let him get out what he needs to say, okay? Officer number two, stop chiming in. <laughs> You're confusing the people. So. Um, and if I do have to come back here, uh, 300-something dollar tickets going to be Okay. And it only gets more expensive. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Is this 1122 here? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so this obviously has nothing to do with the case, but it is interesting for us to just be able to see like the layout of the house and everything. Like they were talking about the sliding door that Brian Koberger used to exit out of it. And there's like the balcony right there. There's like, you see the layout of the house and stuff like that, so. I'd much rather you spend that 300 bucks on beer or something fun. Than yeah, yeah. Sticker, right? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. That being said, warnings. Don't do it again. Yep. I'd hate to come back and... Yeah, these guys seem cool. You know, these cops are like chill. No, All they're right. trying to like you know vibe with the young folks. They're saying like, "Oh, I'd rather have you spend this three hundred dollar on beer or something." You know, like <laughs> like they're not assholes. I've dealt with some cops, and some of them are just straight up fucking assholes. I'm like, bro, you don't have to be mean. Come on. Have a good day. Take care. Oh, man, I feel bad for these neighbors, though, because, like, it seems like there's a neighbor that is, like, one of these houses ain't a college student house, or maybe they're, like, a very studious house. I don't know. But they probably complain about that house right there. They complain about this house. Like, mm. these, these cops are just making the rounds. The rest of the <laughs> Poor girl, yeah. Senior, last year of college, like that's what the family Oh uh, shit, we back over here. Why are we back over here? Alright, who's who's responsible here? Who's responsible here? Whose house is this? <laughs> who's responsible? <laughs> <laughs> um, wait this this video is 10 minutes what else happens you just need to talk to a homeowner or a renter or whoever's house this is i'm i'm one of the people renting okay gotcha you guys are warned for the noise last night sounds like same type of thing you guys were having a party cops last came out night. you were here last night last okay. night we didn't do anything is there an elena shepherd that wait is this a loop i'm so confused is this a loop i think we're looping what law and crime what is this? Hold on a second. Oh, it's from a different perspective. Oh, okay, I was like, yo, are they like milking the content? Okay, this is from a different perspective. Lives here. Who's the Landy Shepherd? The person that was warned for that. Oh, wait, this is this is so much better. I could hear clearly. Oh my god, why didn't we start one of this footage? The other one was so like you know what? Good tactic, law and crime. First play the video that you could barely even hear, and then people when they have to watch the second one, they're like, wait, this one sounds better. Now I gotta listen to it because it sounds better. Noise last night. Yeah. Okay. We well, one thing I will tell you is we didn't do anything last night. No worries. Yeah. Na uh, neighbors are calling in again saying the music's too loud. Okay. okay. All I need you guys to do is turn it down. Sure. Sounds good. That being said, the tickets get expensive. We got to come back out here and, you know, way the music clearer. keeps coming up and neighbors keep calling in. Sure. Understand. Fair enough. Yeah, we'll definitely. Okay, way clearer. Okay, so let's forward to this one right here because I could barely even hear what he was saying because officer number two kept chatting on in. All right, let's see the boss. <laughs> How's it going, guys? <laughs> it's so funny. Someone's like, he's still on the roof. <laughs> Casey, I'm just gonna loop around up here. Wait, here. so who, who was- who Guys. Was, who was that guy? Are they just chilling? Oh, they just chilling. Oh, we can see inside the house. Oh, oh interesting. Is this your place, man? Okay, would you mind going and getting somebody she's who places this? Right oh, she is? You want to send her up back? Who said don't? Did someone say don't open the door? <laughs> Some dude in the back was like, don't open the door. Did you hear that? Would you mind going and getting somebody who places this? Right oh, she is? You want to send her up back here? I apologize. We knocked at the front door, no one came. Yep, thanks, man. Oh, there's still an audio delay. <laughs> yeah, I looked, took one look at that speaker. I said, hmm. Oh, there's a second officer. Hi. Now, that was the officer that was uh, kind of out of breath. <laughs> you get a lot of guys trying to argue private property access. The way I've always done it, and correct me if I'm wrong, was the way I did it there. Find one responsible, have everyone else hold them. Everyone else in the butt. Nope, and your lack of cooperation does not go a long ways with us. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, they're interesting because you're able to see the house a little bit. Is that the speaker that they were talking about? Man, that's a huge speaker. Oh, there's a the kitchen right there. You can kind of see it even though there's a glare. So, like, I think, like, stove right here, microwave, refrigerator. I wonder where's the um, one of the roommates' room? Because didn't the roommate say that she saw him leaving out the slide door? Or did she say she heard him leaving the slide door? Stairs to the back deck. Interesting. I don't think so. It didn't look like Kaylee. Uh, the other the um, blonde one. I don't know if it's... um. Well, there was like Zayna and... How are you? Yeah, she, she looks... Right? Doesn't she look different than the one that walked up earlier? Good. Is this your place? Yeah. Perfect. You know why we're here? And uh, I assume noise. Noise, yeah. Yeah. Big speaker right there. Yeah. Nothing against having a party. Once neighbors start calling in, then we have an issue. Fair. Uh, you go to school? Uh, yeah. Okay. What year? Senior. Senior. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you the same thing I told them. You probably know the drill, right? Actually, no. Oh, okay. So usually, at least for me, I'll give you a verbal warning. Okay. Uh, once I have neighbors calling in, your music's too loud. You're disturbing the peace. Yeah. Nothing against having parties. Nothing against having people over who are overage to drink. Mm -hmm. But again, once we start disturbing the neighbors, then we've got an issue. Yeah. Noise ticket is up to 300. Yeah, and... somewhere around 300. Okay. It's a pretty expensive ticket. I don't want to give that to you. Yeah. That being said, this is your place, so I'm going to hold you responsible. Uh -huh. Because it is your place, you're also responsible for everybody here. Yeah. So I'm going to grab your info. Yeah. Um, and if I do have to come back here, uh, a 300 some dollar ticket's coming your way. Okay. And it only gets more expensive from there. Is that fair? Yeah, that's okay. fair. Absolutely. Uh, actually, let's just do it this way. What's a good phone number for you? Is this 1122 here? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I'd much rather you spend that 300 bucks on beer or something fun than yeah, a noise yeah. ticker. Oh, there's the. Oh, no. Is it... I think that's her doggo. You see the dog go right there? So nothing happened to the dog. The dog was with them. Um, is this 1122 here? Yeah. Okay. But people were saying that like, oh, maybe because Brian Koberger is like a vegan and maybe he like doesn't believe in like harming animals. Maybe it's okay to harm humans. That Like that's why he left the dog alone. Sounds good. I'd much rather you spend that 300 bucks on beer or something fun. Like the dog go. You see the dog go right there? Oh, poor dog go. Yeah. A noise yeah. sticker, right? Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. That being said, warnings, don't do it again. Yep. I'd hate to come back in a few hours and then have to issue that. So, yeah. any questions for me? No. All right. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Yeah. You too. Damn, that's so crazy. Like, two months later. Oh, oh that's named Murphy? Yeah, that was a dog go back there. Um, the roommate, the surviving roommate said that she heard the dog barking, um, and the dog was fine left alone nothing happened to the dog yeah this is uh so if you guys are wondering what we're looking at this is unrelated but um this was uh two months yeah two months before the idaho student murders happened so in november was it november 11 or november 12 one of those days i think november 12 uh they found four students were murdered at this house um there were two surviving roommates and one dog that was unharmed and uh, they have the suspect in custody right now. So, yeah, we're just looking at the, I mean, it's kind of interesting to see the body cam footage because you can kind of get a glimpse of, like, that layout of the house, the surrounding neighborhood. And then also, like, we got to see, like, the kitchen a little bit, you know, with the sliding door. Because that was where um, Brian Koberger, the alleged killer, um, would have exited. There was a girl who said she went on a date with a killer. Yeah, I think a lot of people are coming out um, and saying that, like, oh, you know, like, he was my TA or, like, oh, I work with this person and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to wait. Uh, so far, the date that we have set so far is June. What was the date again, guys? June 20-something where they're going to do the preliminary hearing. So that's been set out six months out. Six months. Uh, he's currently in custody. He's in jail right now. And yeah, well, let's see what happens from then on. Um, mama, 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 mama. How are you guys? You have a hunch that he wasn't popular with the ladies. Maybe he wasn't into the ladies. <laughs> 26 to 30. Thank you, Greenie Beanie. Does anyone know why it takes six months to go to the trial? Oh, they're not going to trial. So I have my notes right here. So we have... The initial hearing, which already happened last week, where they have Brian Koberger appear in front of a judge 
and they form formally uh, talk about his charges. And then from the initial hearing, they wanted to schedule the preliminary hearing, but his lawyers were like, hey, we just got this case, like we need to talk more, we need to get speed to it, so can we actually do a status hearing uh, next week? So that's what happened today, we did the status hearing, and um, when you're being charged with stuff like this, um, you have you have a right to have your preliminary hearing within 14 days. Brian Koberger decided to waive that right, and they pushed that out to June. So instead of doing the preliminary hearing in two weeks, they're pushing it all the way out in June. So if it was me and I was, you know, I was in prison for something that I didn't do and I was being charged, I would be like, do the preliminary hearing ASAP. Get me out of here. But, uh, you know, maybe they have to collect a lot of uh, evidence and stuff like that. And we'll have to see what happens from there. And then after that, they have the arraignment uh, where the police will be. It's basically like the court version of like the probable cause affidavit where they actually go over like why like they charged him and all the evidence and stuff like that. And then, yeah, trial won't happen for another, I don't know, maybe one, two, three years, depending on the caseload and depending on uh, if there's any setbacks or anything like that. So we'll have to wait. Hi, Sal. I know like for us, we're like, we want it to happen now, 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 now. But it takes time to collect the evidence, you know? It takes time to to get like all the, the surveillance stuff, maybe more witnesses coming forward. So we'll have to wait and see. Hey, Sal, how are you doing today? How's it going? Uh, Richter asked, do they have all the evidence or is there more to work out? Um, I was watching a video on court TV or law crime. Uh, they wouldn't be surprised if the, if the police were still kind of processing some of the DNA stuff. Cause like that's like kind of time consuming. So there might be some more DNA evidence that they have that wasn't released in the probable cause affidavit. So yeah, they probably have more things that they're gonna comb over, look through, and we'll have to wait and see from there. You're my source of knowledge. Thank you. I just watch other, you know, I just watch like court TV, law and crime, and read articles. So <laughs> I try to get it all together for you guys. Uh, gotta go to sleep now. Bye, Beetleboard. Have a good one. The only evidence I've heard of is the DNA on the knife sheath. Yeah, so they have the DNA on the button of the knife sheath, but they also have the cell phone. Uh, it's been pinged to the watchtowers that are, uh, the cell phone, sorry, watchtowers, to the cell phone towers uh, near the, uh, where, where it happened. And then they have, um, what else did I say earlier? surveillance footage as well like in the neighborhoods um yeah so it's uh it's gonna be very interesting to see how he's gonna explain his way out of this um my guess my guess would just probably just be like oh i knew the victims i partied of course i you know have dna there they you know it's a college campus uh, it's a college town so i went over and party with them you know i maybe i knew the roommates friends or you know maybe i was in the neighborhood because i know people that are in this area so we'll you know we'll see what they say we'll see what their defense is but they have not found the murder weapon yet. Um, I wonder if they interrogated him. I don't know, actually. Um, I don't know. Um, because they they just went straight for the arrest. So I don't know, like after the arrest, if they like talked to him. But he probably lured up right away. I don't know, because people are like, oh, he's a criminology student. Yeah, but like look at all the stuff that he like already fudged up on, right? Assuming like allegedly if it's him, right? Ah, all right, y'all. So that's a little bit for Brian Koberger, uh, the alleged murder of the Idaho um, stuff. We'll have to wait and see what what, ha what goes on afterwards. Um, I did want to watch this. Okay, so there's something that kept popping up on my feed, and I wanted to watch it with you guys. It's a true crime video, and it's by, I think JCS made this actually. So I wanted to watch this with y'all because um, it kept popping up and not just on JCS, but it popped up on a bunch of other things as well. Let me see. Where did it go? Oh, did I not save the video? Oh, I'm such a dumb dumb. Let's watch JCS together. Oh, yeah. Yeardley's ex-boyfriend or Yeardley's ex-boyfriend. I think this is... on wikipedia really quick all right let's get some background knowledge before we watch the jcs video in the moment i bet it's hard to keep a straight head jcs is a fantastic channel i hope that they got their stuff sorted out because 
they were getting their videos removed, demonetized, and all that stuff. So I hope they were able to get everything sorted out. Because, yeah, I, I really like watching them. I think um, the way that they made their videos and how they exploded kind of set the tone for how other true crime YouTubers start making their videos. So, like, with interrogations and stuff like that. So I really like watching interrogations part. But uh, Murder of Yearly Love. Uh, the Murder of Yearly Love took place in May 2010 in Charlottesville, Virginia. Sorry, we need this music really quick. Women's across, women's across lacrosse student athlete was found unresponsive in her apartment later that day. UVA men's lacrosse player George Wesley Hughley the fifth <laughs> was arrested by Charlottesville police. Hughley was tried and found guilty of Love's murder. So I'm just like laughing at their name, like oh my god, George Wesley Hughley the fifth. <laughs> Yearly Love was born in July 17. Oh, 1987. Wait, Baltimore, Maryland. What? How come I never heard of this before? Murdered and arrest. Around 2.15, uh, May 3rd, 2010, Charlottesville police were called to Love's apartment on 14th Street in the University Corner District. At the scene, Love was found unresponsive and was pronounced dead. The 911 call from... Love's roommate reported that she suffered an alcohol overdose, but detectives noticed obvious physical injuries to her body upon her arrival. The suspect, George Hughley, was living next door. On May 4, Hughley was charged with murdering Love and held in Albemarle, Charlottesville Regional Jail. At a May 6 court appearance, his attorney friend Lawrence stated, Miss Love's death was not intended, but an accident with a tragic outcome. Wait, is he going to say it was an accident, but then he just decided not to call the police or paramedics or anything like that? Oh, okay. Hughley appeared at a hearing via video. Hughley and Love dated over the course of two years, but had broken up. At the Charlottesville police station, Hughley waived his Miranda rights and narrated graphic details of assaulting Love. Wait, how did he say it was an accident? Stating that he kicked open her locked bedroom door shook love and her head repeatedly hit the wall furthermore hughley admitted that he took it intended to destroy her apple laptop computer when he fled her apartment wait his lawyer said that it was not intended but an accident with a tragic outcome oh okay Furthermore, he took the laptop, blah, blah, blah. Evidence that police seized from Hughley's apartment included two Apple laptop computers, a spiral notebook, two white socks, bathroom and entryway, entryway rugs, and a Virginia lacrosse shirt with a red stain. Oh my God, this person's a moron. Investigators also led, also followed leads of domestic uh, DV between Hughley and Love, including threatening emails and text messages that he sent... Oh my God, did they break up and then he was stalking her and decided to move next door to her? Is that what happened? Because he moved, he, he lives next door to her. Do you think he was living next door to her before or after the breakup? Nah, man, I feel like unless that's how they met because he lived next door, they met, they got close. I don't know, man. It'll be interesting to find out. Um, so he sent threatening emails and text messages that he sent to her post breakup, a violent encounter between the couple that was broken by several visiting lacrosse players and an incident in which Hughley attacked Love while drunk, but did not recall. Mm, I don't know if I believe that. Oh, I don't remember. Recall hitting her. An unnamed student reported the couple broke up after the drunken Hughley assaulted Love. Jesus. Oh. Uh, she was pronounced dead. Okay, I think we read this part already. I think we're good. Okay, you know what? Let's just watch the JCS uh, criminal video and then, um, yeah, take it from there. What's his hairstyle? Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. oh just kidding. It looked you like you didn't want water, didn't you? Uh, it looked like he had a uh, what do you call the hairstyle again? Where it's like. Oh, it's like the worst hairstyle in the world. Oh, I forgot what it's called. Guys, what's it called? What's it called? What's called? Um, pre hi, pretty mama bear. How are you doing today? Yep, he was obsessed with her, in my opinion. Mullet! Yeah, I thought he had a mullet for a second there. Okay, so we're starting right now. The police have him in custody. And it says that he waived his Miranda rights. So I'm assuming maybe this is the the one that where he waived his Miranda rights, maybe? If it's okay. Yeah, grab me some water, okay? I need to get some stuff in here. All right, so they're trying to make him feel comfortable. You know, be like, hey, you want some water or anything like that? You're good? Okay, yeah, we'll get you some water. Trying to make him comfortable, you know? Lower his guard down a little bit. He's smiling. 
That's my card. I know I introduced myself to you at your house, but my name is Lisa Reeves, okay, and I am a detective. Hi, Lisa. The Charleston Police Department. Okay. So before I can even, I want to talk to you, I want to make sure you do understand your rights, okay? And that way I can explain to you what's going on and all that good stuff. Do you understand, okay. you understand yes. that? Oh, do you think we have good cop, bad cop here? Okay. Today's date is May the 3rd, 2010. The current time is... All right, your first name is George. Yes. G-E-O-R-G. All these cases are making me lose faith in dating and love. No, don't take like the like things like this, like like murder cases, like the chances of you getting murdered in a relationship. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I'm pretty sure it, it definitely is going to be outweighed by the potential happiness that you're going to be able to find, you know, and having a significant other and stuff. And, you know, just like look for the red flags. There are red flags. GTFO. But other than that, like, don't let it deter you from, you know, finding happiness in your life. <laughs> just be careful. Especially when you're dating and going on blind dates and stuff like that. Like, just be careful, okay? All right, what's going on here? We look like we're in an impasse. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I did it. There's no way I can do it. No way. Oh, <laughs> Okay. This, <laughs> we're already at one hour and eight minutes. What is going on? Why did you guys say, why did you guys come in and say you, you were searching for an assault? I never said anything about an assault. Someone came, someone came in this morning. I never mentioned to you anything. Just told you we're investigating someone. Not, investigating an assault. Do you want me to call anybody for you, George? It's an interesting concept to think of how you might respond to what would normally be an easy question, especially during a circumstance where it becomes a terrifying dilemma. We ask that you contemplate this question while you put yourself in George's position, but not before you grasp the context of what brought him to this moment. It begins with 22-year-old sports scholar Yardley Love, a star lacrosse player at the University of Virginia. She is captured in this photograph playing in the second to last game of the season, clearly aware of the obstacles that lie in front of her, yet continuing to move forward, which is the circumstantial detail that turned this picture into a symbol for the globally recognized organization that would be founded in her memory. This would be the last Aww. photograph taken that day, capturing Yardley's last embrace with her head coach, Julie Myers. Both were unaware this exact moment would soon be on the national front pages. Oh, she looks really petite, too. On May 3rd, 2010, at roughly 2.15 a.m., Yardley's roommate returned from a night out to their off-campus apartment. Upon entering, she saw that Yardley's bedroom had been broken into, at which point she rushed inside to find her unresponsive on the mattress. She had blood coming out of her nose and severe bruising across the right side of her face. But the most alarming thing was that she wasn't waking up. Her friend called 911, who instantly guided her through the steps of CPR, which was then taken over by paramedics who arrived on the scene four minutes later. But their attempts at revival were unsuccessful, and Yardley was pronounced dead at exactly 2.47 a.m. Oh, at 2.53 that same morning, criminal investigator Lisa Reeves woke up to a phone call from the sheriff's office. By 2.59, she had arrived at Yardley's apartment leading the investigation, and by 3.50, confirmed that she had her first person of interest, which was 22-year-old George Hughley V. Yardley's ex-boyfriend, and the next several hours were spent gathering information before she knocked at his front door. She found out that George was a fifth-generation heir to a very wealthy American family, whose roots lay in lumber dating back to the- Yeah, because I was about to say, his name sounds pretentious as heck. <laughs> How, how often do you see the fifth? It's usually like the second. I've, I've seen the third, but I haven't seen the fourth or the fifth before. Uh, he's worse actor than ever. I catch this video. Uh, oh, you watched this video three days ago? He looks like he's a part of Loaded Diaper and Diary of a Wimpy Kid. The 1900s. He was educated at Landon Prep, a prestigious all-boys private school in Bethesda, Maryland, with Oh my god, Bethesda, Maryland! Holy annual crap! Annual tuition fees of up to $50,000. George was I know exactly, I know exactly where that school is. The star player of the lacrosse team and became an all-American athlete. This led to a full scholarship at the University of Virginia, where he remained a key player in the starting lineup, and where he would also meet meet, then spark a romance with fellow lacrosse player Yardley Love. They dated for almost two years. Hughley and Love's relationship was an on-again, off-again one, where they cheated on each other throughout, and that tempers flared both ways. What was going on with these two young people? What may have led someone to do what happened? These are just a completely unbelievable set of facts. Everybody watched the relationship. People were really troubled by it. They were scared for her. Nobody knew what to do. 
Yardley ended the relationship in 2010, just two weeks before graduation. Good Nine days her. later, she was found dead in her bedroom. And that same morning, George Hughley would hear a knock at his front door. Mm. Guy doesn't like rejection. He opened to Detective Lisa Reeves, who was dressed in civilian clothing. She introduced herself as a police officer, but mentioned nothing of the crime. She simply stated that she was conducting an investigation that could benefit from his presence at the sheriff's office. George's response was to lethargically put on his flip-flops, then walk over to the passenger side door of her unmarked police car and let himself in. Somewhat bewildered, Lisa got in and drove them to the police station a few minutes away without talking. It was around then when she noticed bruising on his knuckles and cuts on his forearm. Oof. At which point George was no longer a person of interest. He was the prime suspect. It looks like a mullet. Am I just going crazy? Alright, alright. Sorry. Did you say you did want water, didn't you? I know I introduced myself to you at your house, but my name is Lisa Reeves. Today's date is May the 3rd, 2010. The current time is, I you know, can't tell on that one, 7.52. Okay? My drama papers, too. What's that? My drama? Wait, is he going to act like he doesn't know that his ex-girlfriend passed away? My drama papers do? My drama papers do, right now. Yeah. All right, your first name is George. Yes. Right Good, away. Lisa. Don't give it any attention. Just keep going. Gloss over. Hey, you'll come to notice that George is oblivious to the gravity of his situation, and it would be very safe to assume that he at this moment is unaware that Yardley has died. He seems to believe that he's in as much trouble as he would be sitting in a principal's office, perhaps for getting in a fight at class or on the lacrosse field. And the sooner he provides a sanitized oh. version of the truth, the sooner he'll get to go home. This, of course, ties in perfectly with the interrogator's opening strategy, which we've labeled warmth for the sake of this video. Oh, he didn't know? Oh, he probably thought he, like, harmed her, but she was still alive when... He, oh, my God. Dude, no wonder he's, like, so blasé about everything. I just thought he was just going to be like, oh, I didn't know that happened to her. She will downplay this... He, he literally may not even know that it happened to her. ...the of his situation to a considerable degree while maintaining a friendly temperament with a sympathetic undertone. She needs the suspect to feel safe and secure for the time being. As the less cautious he is, the more information he's likely to give away. Then as soon as he locks himself into one particular storyline, the pressure can commence, mm. which often leads to a suspect being laden with panic and contradictions. Before we ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer before questions. And have one How would this dumb dumb be talking to the police directly? <laughs> Especially when you're rich, you could probably afford a lawyer. But okay, we're glad these criminals are dumb. Thank you. Present during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be provided for you. And if you're willing to talk to us now, you have the right to stop talking at any time. George has two options here. Option one is to remain silent, then allow his father to get him the most expensive attorneys in the country. He would then have years Daddy? to examine the evidence, evaluate Daddy? the many options available, and then construct the most self-preserving storyline with world-renowned experts in criminal defense before they present it to a jury. Unfortunately for George, he takes option two. Mm. But before he does, rewatch the flawlessly reassuring... Do you think it's because he's cocky? He thinks he's smarter than everyone. He don't give a F at all. ...during manner in which he's given the final Arrogant. piece of the Miranda warning. And if you're willing to talk to us now, you have the right to stop talking at any time. Got it? Yep. Awesome. Just need your signature there that you understand your rights and are willing to talk to us. And the time now is 7.53. Yeah. She's read the Miranda rights. All right. She said, I'm going to keep talking. Start, I'm going to kind of ask you some questions and like I said we'll explain things a little bit later um tell me about your day yesterday played golf with um our parents who's a uh, a father son is uh, drunk good or bad i went to dinner with my dad and my two buddies and then uh went home went to the bar for like a little while wait is it me or he sounds drunk as f right now huh? i need to use the bathroom you think he's in denial the whole time? If you're in an interview and you're in trouble, always get a lawyer. Detective Lisa got him on the hook. He doesn't even realize. I'm gonna use the restroom real quick. That's just his voice? <laughs> he's a, I don't know, maybe because it sounds like he's a little bit slurry.
sounds like a stoner dude. Oh my god, Steve's got his like little bone right here. Look at this guy. See him? I don't know if you can see him. He's got a bone right here. He's like sleeping on it. He's got like the rubber toy, the green one right here. Then he's got like Lammy Lamb. Like he's just surrounded by toys right now. Look at this guy. Dogs are so funny, man. They're so funny. They funny. He's so cute. I know you just live here. Surrounded by toys. I have a second corgi and this guy makes sure corgi number two doesn't have any toys when he's sleeping. Poor Shiro. <laughs> Shiro's like, I don't have any toys. Where are my toys? Um then I went over to talk to Yardley. And Who's what? Yardley? Yardley what, is my former girlfriend. Okay. Oh. Which this whole new about, which I understand, but. George has now initiated the investigative subject matter himself. It's the perfect opening scenario for the interrogator because she's given nothing away, making it more likely for him to reveal details that will contradict the evidence. When I went over to talk to Yardley, I, I like was like, Yardley, and she was like, already like totally freaked out because of what she did this past like a few days ago and she we haven't talked since and i was just gonna go talk to her mm -hmm. yardley slept with another lacrosse player from north carolina the week before which is what he just referred to and yeah they broke up two weeks ago so what and she was already like oh like freaking out like you know you can't go you can't go and i was like I'm like just trying to talk to you. The investigation team obviously had no way of knowing this, and George has now confessed to the crime of second-degree trespass. More importantly, however, he's just confessed to initiating the supposed confrontation. He now can't say that he was somehow tricked or misled into that situation. He knowingly stepped into it, and the critical fact he can actually recognize and remember this will be used against him repeatedly in the future. Damn, George, George is a dumb-dumb. George, you dumb-dumb. And... Like, Self snitching right away. She like started being good, like, good. Being like all like, you know, like really like defensive. Yeah, I wonder why she's defensive. Hmm. She was already like, especially she's been getting text messages, emails from you, George, after you guys broken up and you were threatening her. Yeah, I wonder why she's offensive. Like on the defensive edge, and like I was like, listen, I'm not here. Like I'm just here to talk to you, and she like got all like like sat up like, her bed's against the wall like if it was in this corner like, she was like up against the wall and i was like like we were sitting there talking and like she started being like like you know like sal says i feel like in this video he goes through all the stages of grief just because he killed does not mean he does not care about her he would not go through the stages of grief is really interesting uh the old queen loved her corgis he comes from money so probably never been refused anything in his life being like all like aggressive after this and so i was like all right like chill out like and shook her a little bit so just to Ooh. recount what george said over the last 47 seconds yardley was defensive while being in a defensive state she backed up against the wall she then became aggressive george's response to this supposed aggression was to initiate physical contact and she started being like like freaking out and i was like listen i'm not like here to do anything i'm here to talk to you about everything that's ensued in the past week and I seriously doubt his tone of voice is the way it is right now. I just was here to talk to you, Yardley. Why are you acting like this? And, and she was like, and like, sort of like, being like, no, 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 like, like hitting her head, like, st like, stop. Like, like, she's in the corner, I was sitting on the bed, I was like, stop, like, I was like. We were so she's hitting her head against the wall? Like, what the hell, like, we were just gonna talk. So let's go back half a minute and dissect what actually just happened there. And so I was like, all right, like, chill out, like, and shook her a little bit. He will now say the words, and she started being like, then simultaneously mimic a body colliding with the wall. He will then stop himself mid-thought and subtly modify the detail. And she started being like, like, freaking out, and I was like, Listen. It looked like he, like, slammed her against the wall. That's like the body language that I'm reading. And she started being like, like, freaking out. 
he goes from illustrating Yardley hitting the wall to, as he states, freaking out. He seems to realize mid-sentence this isn't the best way to explain her injuries, so he changes the detail to buy himself time. And she started being like, like freaking out, and I was like, listen, I'm not like here to do anything, I'm here to talk to you. He carefully shifts the topic from Yardley to himself, and keeps it there for eight seconds before attempting to re-explain what occurred in a more self-preserving manner. Mm. And she was like, and like, sort of like, being like, no, 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 like, like hitting her head, like. No jury on the planet will believe that Yardley was voluntarily slamming her head against the wall with enough force to cause fatal brain damage. Yeah, that's why I was confused. I was like, wait, is he insinuating that she just like, start hitting her head against the wall? Oh, uh, I saw it. Oh, how come I can't see it? Oh, there it is. The five stages of grieving, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Richter says he's rewriting the story. The <laughs> Rain, Rain says the sixth stage, prison. <laughs> All George has done here is give away the fact that he knows Yardley has sustained some type of head injury and now lied on record. Grief for murderers, grief for murderers, prison. <laughs> ...about how it was inflicted. I was like, we were like, what the hell? Like, we were just going to talk and like... It was not at all, like, a good conversation because that's, like, she was already, like, freaking out with just even seeing me. Yeah, just I wonder why. Okay. So what happened next? Detective's like, okay. So what happened next? What happened next? And she was, just kept hitting her head against the, against the wall while she was sitting on the bed, and I was like... I grabbed her and I like shook her. I was like, stop, like we need to like and looked at her. I was like, we need to like talk about this. And like, I mean, I was on holding her arm and stuff, but like I I never struck her. I never like But you know, this video, so he says he never struck her or anything, but I think they said that they noticed that there was like bruising on his knuckles, right? And maybe some cuts on his hands. Hit her hit her like in the face or anything. I was just like, we need to talk. And she was so like she was so like Oh, I mean, what's the word? Like, you know, like, like, flopping a fish out of the water. Like, like, so, like, all this. And I was like, listen, like, I'm not here to, like. She was flopping, but she was like, she was like this? Fight with you or, like, do anything. Like, here, talk to you. And, like, and she's like, no, 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 like, get away from me. You have to leave, you have to leave, you have to leave, you have to leave, you have to leave. Have to leave. Like, all this stuff. And I was like, all right, like, fine, like. But, like, I want to talk to you. Yo, the body language is so off, but okay. <laughs> he's trying, he's trying, he's trying to construct a story. I don't know, like I said, it sounds like he's, like, partially drunk or something. <laughs> After all this. The detectives were like, man, this is great. We're only, like, five minutes in. This guy's giving us all the details. Okay. And, and like, I was, I was, like, a little bit persistent because of the situation. You know, my former girlfriend who... Like something happened last week, you know, and I was like, all right, like, well. Also, how did he find out that she slept with someone else last week? How did he find out? Did he have access to, to her emails? Did he, like, do you think he, like, hacked into her shit and then, like, found out that there was communications going on? Because this was, there was Facebook back then, right? Yeah, Facebook 2010. How do you think he found out? Do you think he was, like, stalking her? So we were, like, talking over there and... Maybe through a friend? I mean, I, somehow we ended up, somehow I was resting with her on the floor. And I was just like, stop. I just like. Somehow he was resting her on the floor. So he goes from her hitting herself in the head against the wall. She's like shaking. But now he's wrestling her on the floor. And I was holding her. But he's not provoking her. I was her. her. I was a little bit persistent. I was wrestling her on the floor. All further evidence that designates George as the aggressor. He's completely shut down his ability to argue any sort of self-defense claim. And then the conversation... I, I know he took her laptop like, after the it fact. It was not going anywhere. And nothing was happening. And... Uh, Hi, Snow. She like, went back to bed and I, and I left. And I went back home. Okay. Phase one is now complete. The suspect has unknowingly locked Yo, look at Lisa right here. Detective Lisa. <laughs> ...himself into a storyline that will put him away for a very long time. 
the risk of him shutting down or requesting a lawyer is no longer a primary concern. So the interrogator will now increase the pressure. She will confront him on certain elements that she pretended to overlook before, and the ideal scenario is to cause just enough panic so that he backpedals on previous statements and contradicts himself. All right. You know what? It's actually really funny that you say that or very interesting. If it makes no sense, it probably is not true. Nobody kicking their own ass except Jim Carrey. Do you think he was like kind of referencing liar liar right there? I don't know. <laughs> Some of the movements, it reminds me of some of the movements of Liar Liar. And that one scene where he's cooking his own butt in the bathroom. Also, excellent movie, by the way. Definitely check it out. So you go over there, knock on the door. Her front door is open. Mm -hmm. Her room door was closed. I knock, like, like the yard, they, like, she heard me open the door and, and went. She opened the door. Mm -hmm. All right. Went in where? To her room. All right, straight to her bedroom. Straight to her bedroom, yeah, I mean. How'd you get through the door? Her door or the mm -hmm. front door? Her door. Uh-oh. Actually, it might have been locked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might have been locked. You know what? I might have kicked it down. It was. Accidentally, though. Not on purpose. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. Just, just the answer. Yeah, no, yeah, it, it was actually, it was locked, yeah. yeah. Because I think I put a hole. Yeah. You punched door. a hole. I think I put a hole. <laughs> this guy. George, 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 George. We gotta go through his defense team and like see what they said about all of this. Door. Pretty sure, actually, now. Yeah, now you said that, yeah. Mm. Right. Pretty what, sure. What, why did you do that? Well, I, I you guess, you yeah, when I, once I was in her room, she was like very like you know like or like, blah, 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 blah. like I don't want to talk to you like all the stuff. Just remember, but that's the prep. Fifty k a year, right? Was it fifty k a year? Fifty k a year. <laughs> Parents should ask for a damn refund. <laughs> and she's very like you know very on edge like. I but this is good though. We don't want criminals to be criminals to be smart. We want them to be dumb like this. Thank God. Yes, make it easy for the detectives. Come on, make it easy for the prosecutors. I will talk. I will talk. Like, uh, you know. Okay. I was like, listen, like you, what you pulled last week was outrageous. Like, I just want to talk to you. Why would why, you push the door? Now? A very yeah. unusual time to interrupt a suspect in such a contentious manner. He was giving away self-incriminating information that could be used to establish a motive. He was doing exactly what the lead investigator wanted. But Detective Ed <laughs> has now stopped him in his tracks. <laughs> Do you think Lisa's pissed? Lisa! <laughs> it's a reckless maneuver at this point in the interrogation, which Detective Reeves is no doubt conveying at this moment through nonverbal <laughs> communication. She now has to let the suspect respond as to not undermine their position. Yo, Lisa's like, shut the f Because I want to talk to her. Detective Reeves will now bring his guard back down through a reassuring tone and gently guide his train of thought back to his grievances with the victim. Mm. She pulls this off in three questions. Oh, right, we'll continue on. That's fine, continue on. So you're, you're talking to her and she doesn't want to talk to you? Not really. I mean, and, and we talked, though. We, like, there was parts where we were talking and then, like... Do you know what you're talking about? I mean about so many different things. Okay. Like what? Like, like what she did last week. Mm -hmm. Like went to like Carolina. She went to Carolina and hooked up with someone Sunday when we were still trying to figure out things. And I was over there like. Were they still trying to figure out things though? I don't know, man. Maybe in his head, he thought he still had a chance, but maybe in her head, she was like, donezo. I'm done with you. Like to talk, like, I was like, this is like, this is outrageous. Because I was trying to make everything better, and and then like, you know, she was very defensive because she knew, like how upset I was. And the language so far, everything is just blaming her, blaming her for everything. She did this. I was trying to fix it. I was just trying to talk to her. She was shaking her head. She was hitting her head against the wall. Everything's just blaming everything on the victim. It was because I've told her like through email like how sad I was, like, about what she did. And so I was like, and I sat on the edge of it, I was like, listen, like, I want to talk to you, like, like, what you did was bullshit. Like, I was, that's not, like, okay. And I was just like, I, like, and, and she was like, oh, like, not like, like, you know, she's like, uh, like, you know, sort of pushing everything that she did to the back burner and, like, talking about, like, like, you know, like, 
they try to like put everything that she did like wasn't important it kept going to the point where she like i was like listen like Nordy, like we have to figure like out what's going on and she was like i'm not i'm about to, I'm about to talk to you and then she like pushed me like get out of here like like go and i was like no and like i was like apparently days before she was days before he murdered her he emailed her saying I should have killed you. <laughs> George. George, 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 George. Be like, we have to talk. Like, so like get like. When, you, when you're doing that, what, what are you holding on her? On her arms. Like, on her arms, like maybe up here? Like, like shoulders, yeah. Shoulders. Like, 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 come on, like, you know, and see that's when she would like wiggle and like, like get away and like, you know, like hide in the, get in the corner, like really like aggressive, like defensively almost. And, and then I was, and then she ended, I think she was back in bed and I was, and I left. I was like, oh, this is the, not going anywhere. How'd she get back in bed? Oh, uh, we were like wrestling and we stood up and I, I tossed her, I pushed her on the bed. I was like, go to bed, like, I'll talk to you later. Did you touch her neck area at all? Did you choke her at one point? Um, I may have grabbed her a little bit by the neck. May later. have grabbed her? Oh, look at this language. Like, but I never, like, strangled her. Okay. Um, okay. but I, yeah, I mean, during the whole like commotion, you know, like I, you may have, I might have grabbed her neck, but I never was, it never was like strangling her. Okay. More detail that was unknown to the investigation. The fact that he grabbed her neck can now be used as evidence. It paints a more frightening picture of the incident with relation to the suspect's aggression toward the victim. This was an extremely damaging revelation for George's defense. The discussion moves to the moment he left, and George admits that he took Yardley's laptop. Why'd you grab her laptop? Oh, yeah, why? Why? He's putting his own butt in prison. Hey, Joe Zombie. How you doing today? How's it going? Hi, Elron. Hello, hello, hello. Man, this is crazy. They were weeks, weeks from graduating. Because I was so pissed that she wouldn't talk to me. I was like, I don't know. I like took it almost as like collateral, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's not Psycho. reasonable logic, but... Right. Okay. I don't know. Did you take anything else besides no, the laptop? No. Yeah, I'm starting to actually genuinely believe that he does think that she's alive still. Nothing? No. What do you guys All think right. so far? I mean, so we're only 30 I, minutes in. When you left out of there, I mean, you saw that she was bleeding on her nose. She's now about to ask a question with the same implication for a second time. Notice what occurred the first time. Did you go back and check on her at any point? No, I did not. Okay. Did, mm -hmm. did you try to call rescue or anything to make sure she's all right? No, I did not. No. Why? Wait, wait. So did he did he see her bleeding from her nose? The face of bewilderment, if there ever was one. It's very strange that he's so taken aback by such a question, especially when you take into account the possible outcome if he had actually called for help. One medical expert revealed in the courtroom for the very first time that following Yardley Love's brutal beating, had George Hughley or anyone else called for help, she might have survived. Uh, I didn't think it was like, in, I didn't think that she was like, in need of like going to the emergency room. I, she just got, I made it up. Like, Why do you think that? Oh, know. so I he, mean, I, I, he does know. He did know that she had a bloody nose or bloody something. Okay. Did, did you say when you were, and correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, when you were shaking her, her head was hitting the wall? Well, that was in the beginning. That was initially when I walked in, like she was like up in the corner, like saying, get, like, get out of here, like, you know, like this. Mm -hmm. Like, at, at any time when you were shaking her, did her head bang the, the wall? Put yourself in George's position and imagine Yardley had in fact self-inflicted her injuries. You would perhaps say something along the Um, he knows he hurt her. How bad did he hurt her? Um, let's see. A coroner and other doctors testified Tuesday at the murder trial of former University of Virginia lacrosse player that his ex-girlfriend died of injuries caused by blunt force trauma and that alcohol and prescription drug that she ingested did not play a role in her death. 
Dr. Michael Gormley said the autopsy he performed on Yardley Love and other doctors' examination of her brain led him to conclude that she died from cardiac arrhythmia or an irregular heartbeat caused by blunt force trauma that injured her brain, disrupting the flow of blood to her heart. The doctors testified for the prosecution during the first degree uh, murder trial of George Hughley, the five, whatever. He is accused of killing blah, 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 blah. Uh, so she took Adderall. She was drinking alcohol. Gormley testified that Love's blood alcohol content was above the legal limit for drunken driving and that she had amphetamines, a class of drugs that includes Adderalls in her system, but neither was high or present enough and uh, neither was present in high enough levels to cause death. During earlier testimony Tuesday, neuropathologist Christine described a lesion on the lower portion of Love's brain. What kind of lesion is that, asked prosecutor? I would call that a contusion, a fancy word for a bruise. As what the bruise would signify, Fuller replied, it means that there's been blunt force trauma to the head. Fuller also described another injury near the base of the brain in the vicinity of the spinal cord that would have been caused by torque, a violent twisting. That injury, she said, had potentially lethal consequences. The testimony bolsters the prosecution's argument that Hughley violently attacked Love, banging her head against the wall of her bedroom. <coughs> During highly technical testimony, Fuller testified she found no pre-existing problems with Love's brain. The bruising was found on what she described as the underside of the temporal lobe. She said it was a result of the brain moving within the skull and compared it to a passenger in a car that comes to an abrupt halt. Asked by Chapman what she concluded if she wasn't aware of Love's autopsy. Just looking at the brain, no history. I'd call it trauma, no question. Hughley claimed in the police interrogation interviews after Love was found dead that he grabbed and possibly shook her, but he otherwise downplayed their physical encounter. He claimed that she banged her head against the wall of her apartment bedroom. Yeah, that makes sense. On Monday, Gormley said his autopsy found evidence of suffocation, though it did not cause death, as well as a potentially deadly neck injury. So he banged her head... Probably choked her, uh, slammed her around. He also described a series of bruises on Love's uh, legs, lower back, left forearm, and hand, and small bruises on her chest, which he said could be caused by grabbing. Love's most severe injuries were on the right side of her face. The injuries included a battered right eye, bruising to her neck and under her jaw. So it's not like he's just shaking her around out of frustration or trying to like hold her, you know, if she was attacking him or whatever. But she had injuries to her face, her neck, underneath her jaw. Police officers testified that Hughley had bruises in his arms, legs, and knuckles in the morning Love's body was found. Hughley told police detectives that interviewed him for hours after Love's body was found that his bruised knuckles were a result of lacrosse injury. The prosecution presented a series of witnesses late Tuesday to testify about blood patterns in Love's bedroom and DNA and blood evidence. One said Blood's, Love's blood was not found in Hughley's clothes, but was present on bedding and her clothes. Witnesses who testified less would describe the relationship as fury, and both had accused uh, the other of infidelities. Okay. Um, those are the details right there. Jesus. The lines the of crap. absolutely not. I wasn't hitting her against the wall, but like when she's uh, like sitting there in the corner mm -hmm. of like if they're like, they're like like this, and I'm like, who are they like, you know? And I, I was like, 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 what the fuck was that about? Like that, that's such bullshit that you like do that. Like that's such a like bullshit move. Like what, what, what like you know, like. <laughs> okay. Like he never, what are you like doing like, like that? Like. Okay. She she has a pretty good not on her head that's why i'm asking how uh, that how, how you can explain how that would have happened yeah even, george tell us i don't even know when that a knot mm -hmm. i mean like on, on the side of her head she's been hit pretty good right there so i'm just trying to figure out did you hit her with something no was that no, I, nev I never wall? never touched her he struck her he's still saying he never touched her he never struck her oh my goodness yeah but i might have like lightly choked her yeah but i might have lightly grabbed her yeah i might have accidentally kicked down her door mm. anything well you touched her you had your hands on you no know, i yeah no I, mean, I said never struck her okay he mi he's minimalizing everything. So you, you, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna go through this one more time, make sure we're on the same page. So you're, you're pretty pissed at her from a week ago for sending you his text messages. Do you have those text messages where she says she, uh, as you put oh. it, fucked somebody? 
Uh-oh. I actually might have those, yeah. All right, you got your phone with you? Oh! Uh, let's, let's pull that <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> George! Let's see if we can see those. The next moment is fascinating because it symbolizes how drastically George's life is about to change. The interrogator will invade his personal space to make sure he's not deleting anything from his phone. Soon after that, she will take the phone out of his hand and place it on the table. Actions that would be completely unacceptable in almost any other circumstance. Look at her. Move quick. Yep, yep, you gotta move quick, man. Go, Lisa. Go, Lisa. There were, there were like... I guess what you call like a, like a, an ongoing conversation, an ongoing like it's a message and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her, Lisa's so aggressive. Grab that phone, Lisa. Okay. Oh, geez, I wanted to leave that right in front of her. All right. Let's talk about. See, back in 2010, I think, right, 2010 and before, there were so many different phones out and around. But now it's like you either got an iPhone or you got another touch phone that like works kind of similar to an iPhone. So everyone knows how to work like another phone. Like I feel like back then it was like there's so many different phones floating around. It's like, oh my God, how do I use a Motorola? How do I use this iPhone? How do I use this like Android? How do I use this like Nokia, you know? How what you phone is that? I can't even tell what phone that is. You entered. Entered, yeah. She read him his rights. She was like, and if you don't want to talk to us, you ain't got to. And he's like, okay. She read it the Miranda rights. This guy had a 50K a year education, okay? When he was in, was I think like elementary school, middle school, high school, okay? Yeah, I mean. Because to put your, to have put your fist through the door. No, I, she it's actually my leg, I'm pretty sure. Your leg? Because that's, oh yeah, like that's any better. Okay, sure. That's why my leg's like this. Yeah, you're right. That was your leg. Yeah. How'd you get all the bruising on your hand then? This is all from the cross. This is all. That's this, pretty fresh right there, looks. This is all from my lacrosse game on Saturday. On Saturday. I mean, I wear my arm, you can see where my arm pads are. Mm -hmm. Right here, my gloves right here. And that's Even right there, I thought you you wore those padded gloves. This is lacrosse. all. This is all. The yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Uh, do they lacrosse? They wear gloves, don't they? Yep. Gloves. I mean, I'm seeing gloves. Do women's not wear gloves? I don't know. Is it, what? Do they not wear gloves? Gloves? <laughs> this guy says no gloves. No gloves for me. <laughs> Difference. This is all from the cross. And that's, I got whacked here, I remember 100%. Got whacked during the game when I was trying to end, like kill the clock. Mm -hmm. When when you had her and you're shaking, did she scratch you anywhere? No. No. Oh, is there a DNA in her fingernails? No. She's a little girl. She's tiny. Yeah. That's what we said. She looks. She looks petite in the pictures. She did not know she didn't. She didn't, she didn't try me. to hit you or anything like that. No. Okay. So you you kick in the door. Yeah, Go that's so that that that's how I entered. Yeah. Okay. And then I stuck my hand through and unlocked it, and went in there, and okay. everything else is for you. The detectives leave the room for roughly three minutes. When they return, it appears Ed is given the chance to lead with a few of his own questions. I, I know we we touched about what uh, what happened last night, but. Set it up for me, lead it up to me a little bit here. Why did you guys break up exactly? Oh, we got, is this bad cop? We got bad cop here now. I want to see how tall. Wait, so he's six foot two. So I want, I want to see what uh, size they are. Okay, so George is six foot two. Plays lacrosse. Weighed more than 200 pounds. Yardley, uh, where is it? Can't tell if she's like Yardley. When Love's roommate and fellow lacrosse player Caitlin Whiteley testified on the Wednesday, Chapman told the slim woman to step out of the witness box and ask her height, five foot four. And when Chapman asked how Love's height compared to her, Whitney Whiteley says that she's about three inches taller. So she's like five foot seven. She's about three inches taller, but they weighed about the same. Yeah, because in that picture, uh, I couldn't tell what her height was, but she definitely looks really petite, um, like, on the thinner side. And this dude's, like, what, 200 pounds? 
why. Yeah. Well, we are not, we are not from the same area. Right. And I'm going, or she wants me to New York, and I'm not exactly sure where, what I'm doing yet, but I'd like to move to San Francisco. Why'd you take her computer? I don't know. I have no idea. There's maybe maybe because there's evidence on the computer of emails that you sent. No, there's no. I mean, you, you can find, you can read all the emails and everything back and forth. Detective Ed now asks George if he held Yardley down on the bed. He's trying to subtly set the grounds for an argument of smothering, which isn't a terrible idea, but would be disproven by the autopsy regardless. No, no. Did you fall down on top of her? You know, wrestling on the ground? Wrestling on the ground for like a little Did bit. Did you wrestle on the bed at all? No, I never like, no. Never like, I mean, I shook her. No, I mean like, just kind of hold her down until she calmed down on the bed? No, if anything, that would, I mean, I mean, if, any, if anything, that would have been like, on the floor, when we were on the floor, when her nose started bleeding, we were like wrestling around, and that's when her nose started bleeding. Was it pretty noisy when you all were wrestling around? No, I mean, she's screaming. Yelling? No, no, she, no. She wasn't screaming. She wasn't yelling, but she was wrestling with him. She was, no, I mean, she was not screaming. So she was just calm, cool, yeah, collected. If I'm cracking my head in the wall, I'm gonna be saying, "Oh yeah, yeah." yeah. No, I mean, she was not screaming. Yeah. She should have been, probably. I mean, maybe. Yeah. She should have been, probably. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Why do you think she should? I have don't been? know. I mean, well, she was screaming when I first like came into the room, and she was like, "No, like I'm not talking to you. Like, both out of your room, and all that." But like, at any point before you said you you, and this was your words, you said you tossed her on the. If I was his family, I'd be like, "Bye, you get a public defender." <laughs> I'm not wasting money on you. And then you left. Yeah. All right. At any point before that, did she lose consciousness? No. Okay. What happened after you tossed her on the bed? Did she move? Did she talk about, say what? something? I mean, I literally tossed her on the bed and turned around and... He says, I literally tossed her around and then tossed her. So it, again, he says he hasn't put a hand on her. He says he didn't hit her. He didn't do anything to her. Okay. So when you tossed her back on the bed, in, in your mind, she's she was um, bleeding. But you said she was bleeding out her nose and, and you didn't you didn't feel like you needed to call rescue? No. After that, after banging her head and no. Yeah, his defense attorney says that he didn't mean to do it. He didn't mean to. It was an accident. It was a tragic accident. Oh, she, I, I, Shaking I, I, her and blood coming I don't know what his family stands on that is. No. There's nothing about like. A, you missed anything that no one asked him right now? There's nothing about like going, going to get anything or going, you know. I don't know. I took a computer. George rambles about why there was no reason for taking the laptop for another 20 seconds, during which time Detective Reeves decides that enough information has been attained. Phase two is now complete, Ooh. and the fate of Yardley is about to be revealed. Fear. These moments in interrogations are considered important for the purpose of gauging a suspect's response. It's believed that a sharp and sudden revelation can make it difficult to fabricate emotion. Mm. So in theory, this will cause a suspect to provide either a genuine response or a relatively obvious disingenuous response. Mm -hmm. Which One of my favorite videos that JCS did, or actually the, the most favorite video, the best video in my opinion, was the Stephanie Lazarus one. Oh my God, what a good breakdown. Oh, the Stephanie Lazarus one was so, so good. Although I haven't seen their recent videos though. It's been like a couple years since I've seen JCS, but man, the Stephanie Lazarus one really, really stuck with me. Neither did Sarah Boone. He used force clearly. Accidental rage is still rage. George V, where is Pennywise when you need him? People always make it seem like it's an accident. Which often comes in the pretense of shock or remorse. I mean, I guess that's where my logic was at, but mm -hmm. that was, which is... Well, I have to tell you something. I think I know why you took the computer. In the midst of what would have been a flawlessly executed moment... Detect <laughs> Detective number two! Stop messing with Lisa! Let her do her thing! Detective Ed jumps back into the laptop mystery. The suspect has essentially confessed to murder. This really wasn't the time for regurgitated conjecture over a petty theft misdemeanor, which Ed was clearly being advised of once again through nonverbal communication. Why do you think? You, 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 you,
I think you knew that already. No, I did not. In our opinion, mm. George. You know what? I thought initially that he really think that he did not kill her, that he's that he left her bleeding and he's just thought that like she reported the cops. It seems like it, but like I don't know, that reaction was kind of weird. He was just like staring at her, like, oh she's dead. I don't know. I'm starting to think that he knew that he messed her up real bad. What do you guys think? George is being truthful here, and we believe the interrogator feels the same way in this moment. She's dead. How the fuck is she dead? Because you killed her, George. How the fuck is she dead? Because you killed her. God. George appears to be going through a delayed response. It's so foreign a revelation that it's... Oh, okay. Delayed response? Okay. ...yet to sink in. Once the shock settles, he refuses to accept it. And this denial appears to be a momentary coping mechanism before the reality of his... Mm, okay, so maybe that's why the reason why there was such a long pause there, because he was just, like, shocked. He was just like... Oh, fudge. I think that she wasn't moving. I think she wasn't moving when he left. Detective Lisa not playing now. You're convinced? Convinced? The situation truly hits him, which will happen at this time in the footage. I mean, I don't have experience with this. I've never told anyone that like, hey, by the way, blah, blah, blah is dead. Like, I don't have any experience with this whatsoever. I only see grief in like the after effects, not like the moment when they found out that it happened. <laughs> She's dead? Yes. She's dead? Yes. She's dead? She's dead. How? How? I already told you how. You already told us how as well. How is she dead? You just told us. Lisa, so savage. I already told you how. And you told us how as well, George. Oh, my God. You went in there to talk with her, but it got out of control, right, George? The detectives will now add further pressure to keep him talking. Suspects will often divulge information in these moments in the panicked attempt to save themselves, and in doing so can shut down a more credible storyline they haven't thought up yet. The alcohol got a hold of you. You kicked in her door. She started to fight with you. You punched her in the head. Or you cracked, She's not dead. You cracked She's her head. Dead. You cracked She's her head dead. in the window or in the, in the wall. She is. She's not dead. I ain't BSing you right now. It's serious. I want to see. I want so this is the denial part right here. That was like his, damn, I'm actually going to prison pause. Bro, you already told me how, Savage. I know, right? Detective Lisa, let's go. I want to see her. George, look at me. George. She is dead. You are not here to dance with us. You're, you're here because she's dead. The alcohol? I did? don't believe it. I don't believe it's it. It's true. Dude, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I did it. I, I don't believe that she's dead. How did you, how did, how I did don't. It? Yeah, because when we were watching this, initially we were so confused at why he was just so nonchalant right like he was just like okay sure all right yeah let's just get this over with oh who cares call to the principal's office again believe that she's dead how i she, don't believe that she's did, dead. did you punch her did you hit her how she's, there's, there's no way she's dead there's, she's not dead i didn't let i listen, never listen. did anything i didn't i didn't i did not i did not all right let's let's calm down i did not like hurt her like she's she's not dead just for, out of protocol, what we gotta do is stand up for you. Okay, put your hands behind your back. Turn really in handcuff? Oh yeah, it looks like look like a big dude. Relax, you'll be around. Tell me she's not dead. Tell me she's not dead though, please. Will you tell me she's not dead? Relax. Please, will you tell me you she's not dead? You know what? I wish I could tell you that, George. Twenty-two year old. Twenty-two. And her life is done. She's not I can't I not do anything. Yeah, Lisa, don't make that. him feel any better. Don't give him any relief. Oh, no way, there's no way, there's no way. I do not believe it. I do not believe it. There's no way, there's no way she could be dead. Either the head trauma or asphyxiation. It, it, there was no asphyxiation. Okay. There are marks oh, on her oh neck. My God, oh my God, oh my God. What, was she, doing, what she, was she doing the last time you saw her? She was like, she was like standing up with me. She was standing up with me. She was standing up with me, looking at me. Was she standing or holding you? She were was her standing up? up, looking at me. Okay. She's not dead. I know she's not dead. I know. Oh, I'm hundred million percent she's not dead. I did. I just 
You can't all be dead. I know, I know, but I know the hand, George. No, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't. It did not. It didn't. It didn't. And she's like, no, 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 like, get away from me. Uh, you have to leave until you, you, you have to leave. I was like a little bit persistent. Was she screaming? She should have been. I didn't kill her and leave. I didn't just, oh my God. I didn't kill her. I did not kill her. I did not kill her. I did not. I did not. There's no way I did do it. No way. No way. I want a lawyer. I don't believe this. <laughs> an hour lawyer. An hour I after asks this. for a lawyer. What? There's no. There's no way. There's no way. There's no fucking way. I don't know. It so seems to me that he's more pissed at her for dying than he is that he did it. Anyone? A lawyer? What do I get appointed to you? Okay. What do I do now? Go to jail? Yeah. Nah, man, we're gonna free you. You're gonna go prance on a fucking field. Right, really George, want in the chocolate your, factory. You, no, no one want to talk to us. That's fine. Just let you know something. We're working on a search warrant right now, and what it is is we're gonna have to collect some stuff from you, like what's called a buckle swab. Okay. Why did you guys say? Why did you guys come in and say? You, you were searching for an assault. I never said anything about an assault. Someone he did. You know, someone came in. Mm, blaming the cops now because he done fudged up. I never mentioned to you anything. Just told you we're investigating something. We're investigating. He sounds like a spoiled you know brat. He does. At the start of this video, you were asked to think of what you would do in this situation. Really try and imagine what would be going through your mind in this moment, as you might just gain a restorative outlook from both knowing the answer while not having to answer this particular question. But there is of course no possible way you will gain anything close to the newfound perspective George has acquired in this moment, which unfortunately for him is no longer of use. Let me call your dad. Can we call your daddy? Can we call your mom? Your mom? Is that who you'd like me to call? Is that important? Mm-hmm. I don't know about that. What's your mom's name? Oh my god. What's her number? 301 96. Okay. How? Did you want me to call your dad? Just her? She'll talk. Mm -hmm. She can tell her everything. Okay. How? <laughs> oh, George, we feel so bad for you my god i feel so bad for you george <laughs> i don't believe it how is she there's no way she can be dead there's no way there's no way there's no way there's no These yeah, next handcuff few the are a turning point. The leg irons <laughs> seem to initiate a shift in his constitution, and his denial will completely cease from this point forward. He will continue to ask why and how, but he will no longer reject the severity of what is happening. Talking to. Oh, okay, I was like, wait, was he trying to go for the crazy angle or something by talking to himself? But okay, thank God we don't have to watch something like that. I'm here for the rest of my life. I'm sorry. So I'm here for the rest of my life in this room. No, in jail. <laughs> okay. It's cop being a smart ass in this room. <laughs> oh, dead guy, man. Yep, so you work with. <laughs> I'm sorry? You call my mom? No, I guess. Yeah, you do want to talk to her. 
that was when you need your family the most, but, you know. <laughs> Jesus, this guy was about to graduate and go out in the real world, get a job, maybe make a fam. Oh, my Lord. How many years do you got? George was taken to the regional jail soon after this moment. He would go on to plead not guilty to murder and was held without bond for almost two years awaiting trial. It began on February 6, 2012. Well, testimony is now underway in the murder trial of the former UVA lacrosse player accused of killing his ex-girlfriend. For the first time, we have video of Hughley as he was led into the courtroom. Contrary to his appearance in the days that followed his arrest for the murder of 22-year-old Yardley Love, he appeared pale, frail, and gaunt. The prosecution presented a case that Hughley went to Love's apartment that Jesus, he aged like night, bust ten years through her bedroom door, and in some way struck her, causing blunt force trauma, which led to her death. We've also learned that on that night, George Hughley was exchanging what we're just. Hey man, you on that prison food diet? Prison food diet. Described as playful text messages with three other women. Those messages continued late into the night and even after the alleged attack. Throughout this trial, Hughley has sat expressionless, almost stoic at the defense table. All of that changed today as this police interview was airing. Hughley began crying, was often pinching the bridge of his nose with his hands, and looking down as he listened to the sound of his own hysterical voice. I did not kill her. I did not kill her. I did not. I did not. In court Tuesday, Day, Hughley's defense faced an uphill climb. The most riveting testimony came from former UNC lacrosse player Michael Burns, who testified that one time while visiting UVA, he heard some yelling for help from Hughley's apartment. When he opened the door, he said he found Hughley with his arm wrapped around Love's neck, choking her. Hughley then let her go, and she ran out of the room crying. A variety of medical wow. experts took the stand this Wednesday, and they all seemed to agree that Love's death was the result of blunt force trauma to the head. This was followed by highly distressing witnesses testimony from Yardley's neighbors. The noise was so loud. This was such a violent death that they heard it downstairs. Two separate witnesses <clears throat> and it sounded like a stereo crashing to the ground. And it certainly didn't help that the jury knew that she was alive for two hours before she died, indicating that if George Hughley had come to his senses, he could have gone back there, called 911 and possibly saved her life. Still the driving argument Damn. for the defense is that George Hughley never that me too. I did not. I did not. I was going to make that joke too. Never <laughs> intended to kill. They say this was all a tragic accident, that he does not deserve a life sentence, but instead a lesser charge and a second chance. Guilty of second degree murder and you. No, 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 no. She was 22. She had her whole life ahead of her. This guy had a pattern of being abusive. Hell no. You will hear the sentence momentarily. A 26 year prison term came down. George Hughley was brought to court to hear his lawyers plead for the 26, judge. 26, so he'll be like 50. The 26 year sentence recommended by the jury, Judge Edward Hogshire did trim it back, but by just three years. The jury in this case years? recommended 26 years. The judge changed it to 23, probably a small difference. But Why? Just keep it 26. But why would he do that? It's surprising, isn't it, considering this is a woman who was beaten to death in her own bed. We think that George was convicted of a crime inconsistent with the facts, and he received a penalty inconsistent with what. <laughs> the evidence would require. Okay. There are no winners uh, in this case. With credit for the time that George Hughley has already served in jail, and if he gets time off for good behavior, no, he my be God. in 18 years. And the family for Yardley Love has put out this statement, saying, we find no joy in other sorrow. We are relieved to put this chapter behind us. As for George, he was incarcerated at the Maximum Security Augusta Correctional Center for 10 years and has since been transferred to a prison work camp in Richmond where he's expected to serve out the rest of his sentence. The present consensus in the media is that George had no intention of killing Yardley, but that his 23-year sentence is still appropriate, if not lenient, and that him being drunk to any degree at the time of the murder is not an excuse, nor mm -hmm. does it lessen the culpability of his actions to any extent. He'll be released at the age of 45, meaning he will have a second chance at life. Yard yeah, I mean, 45, you can still do shit, you know? Hardly was never afforded. You can decide for yourself whether he deserves it or not.
A comforting prospect to this tragedy is the nonprofit organization that arose from it. The One Love Foundation carries extremely important messages, both on social psychology and preventative education. Their website will be linked in the description of this video. Damn, that's crazy. I've actually never heard of this case before. Have you? 45 years old, man. He'll still be able to wife up or husband up, have kids if he wants to, play video games, do stuff. Yeah. That's crazy. That's like UK told a joke. The young lady will never be free to live her life again thanks to the meathead. Yet he'll be out and be able to live a decent life. There'll be a Georgie the Six. <laughs> How are you guys? He could have rendered aid, but he left on Bo's channel. Wait, what was on Bo's channel? Wow, the family statement was powerful. He should have been given life. She would never get to live her life, so he doesn't deserve to live his either. In the UK, life is only 14 to 16 years. Out in 10 is disgusting. So he's an alcoholic, domestic, AB. This type of behavior just doesn't go away. It's so infuriating. You know what? Hopefully, the time that he spends in jail, hopefully that will change him. Hopefully, he'll do a lot of introspection, learn how to control his anger issues, and, you know, he'll come out a better person. Uh, that's the best thing we can hope for at this point, right? Yeah, join the Discord. Snow Owl, you hear about the audio, the text, the victim statements, and the refusal to seek a conviction. Pretty sickening. I heard like bits and pieces about that. UK. <laughs> UK sucks. Um, I hear like places in Europe, they're a little bit more lenient. They work on like rehabilitation of people, which was, if they truly do work on like rehabbing people and they have a like success, like a decent success rate, then, you know, that could be okay too. But yeah, it really does suck when you have someone that's murdered and they're not going to be able to live their life ever again. And it was done at such a young age, you know, right before they were able to go out there, go work, have a family. So, so many things that you miss out on. All this week you've been hearing about Prince Harry. You're so over though. What's going on with Prince Harry? I saw that he has like a, I just finished watching Harry and Meghan on Netflix. And I saw that he now has like a thing going on on Hulu. Like it, like it says like just Harry or something. And then he has like a book that's out. <laughs> the reoffending rate is off the charts. In uh, UK or in the US? What is it up with Harry? Hi, David. How are you doing today? You know, I watched Meghan and Harry. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I still don't get why people hate Meghan so much. People just love hating her. <laughs> I don't think she's so bad. I think she's okay. I think she's all right. But um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with Prince Harry lately. Uh, Prince Harry. I think he has like a show on Hulu. So it's like just Harry, right? I mean, they gotta they gotta make their money, okay? Right now, talking about this whole royalty shit, it's making them bags, okay? Bags of money. They just trying to milk the money as long as they can. It's because she American. She seems like a like. Out of any other celebrity that Prince Harry could have chosen, I think he did decent with Meghan because one, she's like an actress, right? But like he could have gone wrong in so many different ways. There are actresses out there that are like, you know, probably do a lot of drugs, maybe drink a lot, maybe don't care, only cares about money, maybe only cares about just like, you know, being a, uh, what's it called? What do you call someone again that just like is with someone for money? Like, I don't know. I felt like she like volunteered. She like traveled to like other countries and she actually like cared about like social justice and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. She seems like a pretty decent person, um, especially like for a celebrity, you know, because she could have just like she could have just like, you know, just done her acting thing and just not give a F about anything and just like, you know, just be with him. Yeah, gold digger. Sorry. So, I don't know. I mean, I thought she seems like a pretty decent person. Like, they were able to bond because they both liked, you know, helping and, like, giving back to the, you know, communities and stuff like that. So, she seems okay to me. I feel like he could have he could have found anyone that was, like, he could have found, he could have went with, like, worse, you know? Like, he picked, like, the most um, decent, a very, a very decent human being that seemed to care about people. 
Yeah, but here's the thing, though. How do we know that's true? A lot of people keep saying, they're like, yeah, but she did this, she did that. But, like, how do you know that's true? How do you know it's not fake? You know, with, like, oh, but she was, like, bullying the staff. But, like, it wasn't the whole point of um, them coming out and speaking their truth was that they would fabricate lies in the newspaper about her. It was, like, through tabloids and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. We don't know if it's, like, actually true or not. Like, we haven't seen anything that she's done that seems horrible. Everything's just, like, hearsay shit, you know? So, I don't know. I, I feel like people just, like, love to hate just to hate. I haven't seen anything so far about Megan that's worth hating. Right now, it's just, like, yeah, I consider her being, maybe being annoying, but I don't know if I really do consider her annoying. Richter thinks he treated her like shit. There was an investigation into her bullying. Was there, though? Was there really? I will say that Amber Heard seems to do a lot of noble and kind things for different communities, like visiting hospitals, whatever she did, but that's not the full picture as we know. I think Amber Heard is a whole different species than <laughs> Megan Merkel. <laughs> uh, Baggage Claims makes pretty good videos on Megan and Harry. Okay, cool. You should hate her, Corgi. She stole your man. You should be the princess. <laughs> what if I wanted to be the queen instead? <laughs> I get pissy too. People were talking shit. I'll save. Here's the thing, okay? She she went into the royal family. They had their old archaic way of doing things. And, you know, I could see why that put a lot of strain on her relationship with Harry, her relationship with other royal family members. Like, it was just, it's just like, I don't know. It's like, it's it's hard to maintain the old ways of doing things. Like, Megan, you know, whenever she was, like, getting shit on, she wanted people to defend her. And the royal family was like, nah, 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 nah. We don't do that. We kind of just stay neutral. And I can understand that from their perspective, too. Because, you know, they're just figureheads, right? I don't know. I think the royal family is just kind of useless. But anyways, that's my opinion. They're just, they're just there just to be there. And uh, people like them. They're very popular. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I can see why, like, people also don't like Megan. Because they're like, oh, well, she's trying to change our way of doing things. Like, we've been doing this for, like, hundreds of years. Why is this American here trying to change everything up? I don't know. Like, I understand things from both perspective. Like, I can see how the Roy family are trying to just, like, you know, be on the down low. And then Megan's pissed that, you know, she was treated horribly by the tabloids. And then Harry's kind of, like, in between, like, you know, his family or, like, his new family. So, it's tough. But I don't know. So far, it doesn't it really doesn't seem anything. There doesn't seem much about Megan that's, like, super hate worthy like the amount of hate that she gets i think she gets like almost like amber heard's level of hate and i'm like D yo this bitch didn't even do anything <laughs> she married the guy and the guy just happens to be part of royal family and uh the way they do things just sucks you know but people are like well she, she should have known better she should have known this was going to happen to her but it's like yeah you, you know you would know that it ha you you should know better and that it would happen to you but it doesn't mean that you can't fight for it right i don't know um yeah i don't know Turd is on a whole different level. That's how you get to the queen. It's a long game. <laughs> I'm good. I would never do the royal family stuff. But I don't know. Well, uh, I'll keep an eye out, you know? I'm not like Team Megan and Team Harry or anything. I don't really give a fuck about them. But they seem okay. They seem all right. Now, people do mention that like, oh, you know, Megan's annoying because she keeps bringing up like all the stuff that happened to her. But like, I get it though. She was fucked. You know, she feels like she was fucked over. And uh, yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> You know, and right now, it's not like they're really making any money or income, right? So the only thing they can do is just keep telling their story over and over and over again. So I get it. You know, they're trying to get their bag. Her own family hates her. Um. Okay, so I watched the bias part for that portion. So it was like her dad was trying. I think it was like her dad. Um, Her dad and her half sister well let's start with the half sister the half sister seems like a psycho person who just creates a bunch of like fake stories about megan because she was trying to either like get money you know get get like have the exclusive stories and stuff like that and then megan's like well i did i barely even grew up with you like i'm so confused like how you have all these stories about how we used to be really close and now we're not here's the thing when people get famous sometimes even rich too you know people in your sometimes people in your family and your friends they turn on you it could be jealousy. It could just be because they're opportunistic as well. Like, I thought it was really sad how her dad, um, 
her dad like partially raised her like i think the dad had like half custody and then all of a sudden the dad was like selling stories to the news and stuff like that you know because he was she was getting money and like i don't know sometimes people just see the money and the dollar signs and that takes pri you know that takes priority over family and kids and stuff like that so i don't know but um that's uh i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I could see that happening is what I'm saying like sometimes when you have someone like for example it happens with like twitch streams sometimes right when you have like a twitch streamer all of a sudden gets a bunch of views they start getting more popular you have other people that were once your friends they start getting like jealous right and you start finding out that they start talking shit about you so I have like a lot of friends that like you know would blow up on like streaming and stuff and then they would always like tweet things like, oh, you know, like now you know who your real friends are. So it just happens. People are just sometimes greedy. They only look up for their own selves. Your bully pops up claiming you were best friends. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've always heard of like that trope before. What bothers me about Meg is like like Amber, she claims to be a feminist and activist. So, so far, I don't see her campaigning for anything. Um, For Megan, I mean, I've only seen uh, what's on the Netflix. So obviously, it's going to be biased, right? But I think like for, I don't know, who knows, right? She could be BSing. So I have to see like a, maybe like an anti megan and Harry documentary to like balance it out. But yeah, I don't know. I watched the documentary because I was like, oh, I want to know why people hate Megan so much. <laughs> you wonder why her mom is no longer in the picture? Who? Who's mom? I think she's still really tight with her mom from my understanding. Yeah. Oh. But anyways, I don't really follow royal family stuff. So you guys update me if there's anything interesting. Um, you know, if there are any like allegations about Am about Amber, <laughs> about uh, Megan, you know, being a bully and they have like a report and all that. I'm down to read that shit. Am I doing Kalisto today? Mm -hmm. Am I doing Kalisto today? Maybe I'll do Overwatch because it's only going to be like a couple hours. Uh, is this about the Koberger or about the royal family? We covered the Koberger stuff earlier. Um, covered the Koberger stuff, moved on to JCS and uh, about Yardley Love's case and her ex-boyfriend. And then I don't know why we're talking about the royal family right now. <laughs> why, are we taking, why are we talking about the royal family? But I don't know. I mean, it's tough though. It's tough. You guys ever... Has anyone here ever been married to someone and then have their entire family just like not like you just because they just don't like you? It could just be because like they think you're not good enough for, you know, the daughter or the son and the family just hates on you and there's nothing you can do to like turn them around then they're just assholes. I hear that story a lot, you know, like where someone will marry into someone will marry someone and their family just like treats them like shit, but they're forced to like have to like, you know, swallow their pride and just smile. Fuck that, okay? Don't do that. I would never fucking do that. Yeah, right. Be with someone, have your in-laws hate you and like give you shit. No, it's not worth the headache. I'm sorry. <laughs> Megan Hurd weighed Amber Markle. Damn it. <laughs> Amber is Megan. Megan is Amber. Why do you think they are never in the same room? Uh, will I be watching the Myrtle? Oh my God. The Myrtle stuff was wild. I, I looked into the Murdo stuff like maybe a year ago, I think. And I haven't looked at any updates, but it is wild. It is so messy. But um, that's supposed to be happening soon, right? I need free babysitting. Gotta keep the in-laws closed for free babysitting. I don't know, man. If they're a headache, if there's anyone in my life that's a headache, snip, snip. It's not worth it. Snippity, snippity, snip. Uh, Finkel's Einhorn and I feel like it's even it's even harder too if um, the in-laws don't get along with you because sometimes the in-laws will do some really toxic stuff to your kids and talk crap about you or question your authority or you know like I don't know it's like some really weird mind games that they do or like if you have like certain rules restrictions you know in place the in-laws would be like well I'm not gonna follow that I know what's best you know so I don't know there's like a lot of really weird shit that happens um and uh, for me I just wouldn't I don't know. I wouldn't deal with that. Harry has turned into a pathetic, whining, self-absorbed fool. Why do you think so? You know, I think Harry and Meghan went through some shit. And I think they're just airing out all the dirty laundry. Shitty in-laws are the worst. Been there. Glad it's over. Yeah, it's like, it's not worth it. And if you're with someone that's not willing to defend you because they're, you know, I mean, there are a lot of really weird dynamics, right? Sometimes like um, if you're, if, if you have, if you're with someone that has like a narcissistic mom, it's going to be really hard for your significant other to overcome that, right? Because they've been ingrained for, you know, 20, 30, whatever amount of years that they're, you know, 
that they have to be like obedient to their mom and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. There's like a lot of really weird shit. But honestly, like, I wouldn't want to be with someone who couldn't stand up for, for me and for themselves and would have their family steamroll all over. Like, fuck that. I recommend that everyone cuts off a toxic ass family member. Yeah, I do too. I know people like to say that like blood is thicker than water, but no, you can find other people that you'll have good relationships with. And sometimes it does suck though. Cause like sometimes you do want to have, you know, a mom or a dad, like everyone else, or like a sister or brother or daughter, you know, whatever son. But if they're toxic, you know, they're not healthy for you. You don't want to deal with their shit. Bye bye. Who cares? Um, have I seen no sparkles manager? No, I have not. <laughs> See ya, queen. Good luck with everything. Feels so weird to psychoanalyze him, but from everything I've seen, I think Harry never got over his mother's death and Megan's sort of taken her place in his life in a proper Freudian stuff. The worst betrayal can come from family. Yeah. I had like some really crazy shit happen to me with like my mom and like, oh my God, I don't know. It sucks. And the thing that sucks about too, is like sometimes when um, you have shit that happens in your family, there's such like a generational difference that sometimes you'll never ever have that trauma resolved. So, so like for me and my mom, like we're cool right now, but we're never going to talk about like past shit or like, you know, things that like, um, she did that really fucked me over. It's just kind of like, okay, like, I don't know. It's really weird. I have a really weird relationship with my mom, but I keep her at arm's length and I kind of just like, it's more like I, I, for me, like, I, 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 I've always wanted to have, like, a mom or a dad, right? And so for me, I keep my mom around because she fulfills the needs that I want in a mom, which is like, oh, okay, I have someone that's a mom, and it's kind of nice to have a mom around. But, you know, I keep her at, like, arm's length. I'm like, bitch, you over there, I'm over here, and, you know, I take what I want from you, and you can take what you want from me, but I'm not going to take your bullshit. It's more like that kind of relationship. <laughs> it's the worst when people won't admit the wrongdoing. Yeah, that's the worst. That's how me, my brother, my sister, we feel with our mom. My mom's just like, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, and we're like, okay, cool, whatever. But, you know, it is what it is. I think you just have to accept. Um, you're, you're not always going to get the outcome that you want from other people. You just kind of have to accept people who, who they are. But at that point, you have to, you know, figure out with yourself if you, if you want that in your life or not. So I would just say just pick and choose what you want in your life, you know. You don't have to deal with everyone else with everyone's bullshit. You can take the parts that you want from them and then you can just leave out the stuff that you don't want to deal with them. So, yeah. It's hard being perfect. Lowered expectations. Good night, James. I'll see you later. Bye. All right, note to self. James hates Prince Harry. <laughs> All right, what's going on with Prince Harry though? What's, uh... Okay, in his own words, special coming soon to ABC and Hulu. I think the sentiment that people just get, they're just like, they're just so over hearing about uh, Harry and Meghan, I guess. That anytime they hear about like, oh, a book's coming out, or there's a memoir, or there's a special coming out, or a TV show, they're just like, oh, we're just so over, we don't care. But I, I don't, I watched their Netflix show, I thought it was interesting. Jib seems like a smart fella. All right, y'all. Guys, uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I forgot to record the stream, so I'm just going to push the stream out as is. I'm not going to like chop it up and make videos or anything because it takes a, it takes a while for it to, to render on YouTube and for me to download it at a higher quality. It will probably take like two weeks or something. I don't know. But we're just going to... If you missed early in the stream, don't worry about it. I'm just going to put the stream out as is, and you're going to have to listen to all my ramblings. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Harry is getting full body laser hair removal. Henceforth, shall be known as Prince Baldo. <laughs> Prince Baldo. <laughs> Some of the ways he kept bringing his mother in the memoir was sad. It was a little disturbing at times in context. Listen, I think it's really sad to have to be a children, a child, living in the royal family. Um, like the scenes where they had Princess Diana coming up to the reporters because the reporters were like pestering her kids, trying to get them to take pictures, trying to get the kids to pose, trying to get kids to like do something exciting instead of just standing there. And like Diana came up to them and was just like, hey, this is like our day off. Like, please stop pestering. I don't know. I feel so bad for kids that are, you know, kids that are, especially in today's age with social media and all that stuff and having your pictures plastered everywhere. Um, Yeah, I feel bad. Any kids born into the royal family, it just seems so, so fucked. That's the best part, rambling and gambling. Diana had it really bad with the press. Yeah, I feel so bad for Princess Diana. And, you know, I think what happened with her was really tragic. Not just, like, you know, her being chased down by paparazzi leading to the uh, car accident, but the stuff that she dealt with while she was, you know, part of the royal family. So, 
seems really tough, you know? And I think I think that's what Megan dealt with. So that's why I can, like, sympathize with her. But, yeah. Do I really care about Megan and Harry? No. But I can sympathize with her. <laughs> the worst thing is that him telling everyone he killed 26 Salivans in Afghanistan, he's put a target in everyone's head now. Wait, hit him saying that? I know he served in the military, right? I don't know. We'll see. I'll like I'll like read stuff here and there about uh, Megan and Harry, but I don't really care about it. You think Megan likes every second of it? You think she loves the attention? I don't know. I feel like that's like the type of attention that like nobody wants. Like negative attention, people coming after you, your family turning against you. I don't know. That sucks. That's like drama that like you might want to live that drama when you're in your teens and your maybe early twenties, but when you're like thirties and when you have kids and stuff, I don't know. I feel like I'm just like over it. Like. Ugh. I'm good. Yeah, it was horrendous for them. I feel for them for Diana. I was like Diana. She died months before I was born. I always felt like a connection to her in a way. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. If you guys uh, let me know, you know, any any anyone here that hates uh, Megan and Harry, definitely tell me. <laughs> I'm very curious why y'all hate them. <laughs> you know, you don't always have to agree with me in stream. It's fine. Oh, uh, it is very interesting to hear like the other perspective because I don't get why people hate them. I think they're they're just chilling, you know? They had some shit that happened to them and they're just trying to live their lives. But they're trying to milk it because they need the money, okay? Royal family ain't paying for their bills no more. Negative attention is still attention. Oh, I don't know, man. But there's like some negative attention where it's just like, you just don't want that negative attention, right? Like same thing for like victims who accuse, um, you know, um, other people of like abuse and stuff like that or like, you know, the R word. It's like, yeah, you're still getting attention. Like, people are saying, like, oh, but these victims are getting clout and attention. But it's like, yeah, but it's, like, unwanted attention. And it's not even clout that they're really gaining. It might be, like, momentarily they're getting, like, followers and stuff. And people will sympathize with them. But it'll probably drop off. Like, I don't know. It's, like, not really, like, the attention that people want. But I don't know. I don't know, fucking Megan. It's possible. It's possible that she could, you know, she could. She could be a horrible person behind the scenes, you know, pulling the strings, like people said, and being a bully and all that stuff. It's possible. I don't fucking know her. But I don't I don't see it, I guess. <laughs> Dweezil, I hate Megan. Megan reminds me of Amber. Liars. Oh, uh, my uncle was illegal. How come they get a citizenship? Deport them. Um, I don't know, because they're rich, famous, and all that stuff. I don't know. Yeah, rich and famous. Got the monies. He treats those deaths as if they were things and not human beings. It's war, but they're still humans. I haven't read that article. Um, was it like in a video or was it like in an article that he was quoted in? Snow says, I certainly don't hate them. But there are a few people I hate, but I have lots of mixed feelings about them. I just wish for the best for the little ones, really. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, it was interesting to talk to you guys about this. <laughs> Um, if there's any other updates, let me know. And for those of you guys who are hanging on the stream, thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, I'm gonna go... What time is it? I think I'm gonna go stream on Twitch. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go stream on Twitch, y'all. Um, but on Twitch, we don't do true crime at the moment. Uh, I try to do true crime stuff on YouTube and then on Twitch. We're gonna do gaming because I, I, I want to play video games. I just want to chill. But uh, guys, thank you so much for hanging out on YouTube. Um, again, this video is gonna go live because I forgot to record the stream and I'm not gonna chop up the videos. I'm just gonna, it's just gonna be push as is, okay? It's gonna be very wordy. And um, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Um, I'm still working on Meg the Stallion stuff and um, I think that video should be coming out like the next two days. So if you guys missed it and you want a whole recap of it, it's like three hours long, but I chopped it up to three parts. So thanks you so much for hanging out. I hope you guys have fun. Good night. Rain, thank you so much for showering us with your humor as always. And um, I'll see you guys later. Bye, Joe. Bye, David. Bye, Snow. Bye, Cecilia. Recta. Um, Sal, Roy, Dweezel, E, 4 billion, and all you guys who were here earlier. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you guys being here. I saw Micha as well. Jill. So I hope you guys have a good night. Take care. I will be on the Twitch. Uh, same handle. Corky sign with two A's. And yeah, feel free to pop in there. We're going to play Overwatch. But otherwise, uh, I'll see you guys in the next YouTube stream. See ya! La 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 la!